Hi. Hi, Louise. Good evening. How are you? <laughs> welcome, welcome. Sorry, I'm, I'm a little late. I thought I was totally ready. I'm like, oh, I have all that stuff picked out. And then I was like, oh, wait. <laughs> so I'm running around picking out fabrics. Probably like maybe one or two of you are as well. Hi, Late Night Knitting Podcast. <laughs> How's it going? I, I, it's so great that you can just write whatever name. You know, like it, it, you can just write. Like I've seen full sentences, you know. I'll call you Late Night. <laughs> How's it going? So um, welcome if you're new here because there may be a few folks from my chicken boots days joining today because they're like, wait, you have a sewing stream? That's what happened to chicken boots? Um, welcome, this is what I do now. I am a live sewing streamer, so I hang out and sew with folks. Um, I haven't been knitting lately, sorry. <laughs> I picked it up the other day and I was like, wow, my hands are a little out of practice. They were a little tired. Um, so this is uh, the first pattern that I've ever really sold. I mean, I sold the Notions Case pattern um, back in Chicken Boots, and now that's a free pattern if you sign up for the newsletter. All the patterns I sewed this week, except for one, were free, one way or another. Um, and this one's only six bucks. It's kind of my um, my like, how do I, how is, how do you go about selling PDF download patterns? on your website. So it was a really great learning thing and folks from my original days before even Chicken Boots had a name may have one of these. So thanks Louise. Oh that's awesome. I'm glad. <laughs> oh that's awesome late night. Thanks. I appreciate it. I'm really enjoying it. Um, it's obviously something I have always done a lot is sew. And I was always a sewer in a knitter's world as chicken boots, but I was a knitter as well. Um, in fact, these are all my scrap yarns, Louise. They're just all the scrap yarns I had and I uh, just, you know, did it on the fly. It's a funky sweater, but I, I really love it. It's really warm though. So special, special occasion meaning when it's cool enough to wear. So, um, yeah, so I um, always have sewn. It's something I've done since I was in my teen years and um, worked in the garment industry as a pattern drafter and designer, lots of, lots of different places, lots of different types of companies and everything. So, um, but now I'm just hanging out and chilling with you guys and doing it. So if you're new here and you've never done a live stream before, um, it is kind of odd, I understand that. And if you wanna chat with us, if you're on YouTube, you need to create something called a channel. It's kind of the equivalent of just having an account. It just kind of makes you less um, invisible to YouTube so that you look legit and you're not going to do something annoying, I think, in someone's stream, basically. It just gives you a username and the ability to chat and say hi. And we really like it when you do. It's really fun. That's what's a great thing about live streams is that they're interactive. You can ask questions. You can question why I'm doing something. I'm totally open. I'm very non-judgmental of all abilities and really welcoming of everybody. I really enjoy it. So yeah, that's awesome late night. Me too. That's how I got into it. I really love live streams because I could say, hey, how did you do that? And then they would reply. And it was so great. It would save me so much time. I'd already been looking for the answer and I couldn't find it, you know. So if you're on Twitch, um, and I do watch the chat on both, but I am definitely looking at it more on YouTube because most of the folks are over there. And so, but I personally really love Twitch. It's the, my number one platform for watching live streams because I really like the format. And I like watching gaming streams. So that's kind of why. So which is pretty unique, I know. So um, today, we're gonna do both. Um, typically, if you're new here, what I do is I cut something on a Wednesday. We sew part one on Thursday and we sew part two on Saturday. This week is a little different. I've been doing gift projects all week long. I cut them all out on Tuesday, except for today's. And then we sewed them on each day. Today, because I feel like this is my first time streaming sewing these since I released the pattern, I would do both. I would cut and sew 
all on the same stream so that you can join in and see how I did. Just in case you couldn't make it on Tuesday and you're new to the live stream thing, I figured maybe you would like to see it all in one. So I'm gonna try and cram in a little bit today as far as that goes. I've already cut out one cupcake um, just to kind of cut down on some of the time. I'm going to cut out two of each and hopefully sew both of each. So we'll see how it goes. I can last about three hours before I'm starving. So <laughs> I'm not gonna eat in front of you guys, I pledge. <laughs> so so anyway, what we're making today are the cupcake and the pie slice pin cushions. Um, people hear me blab about these all the time and it's just because that's what I have to do. I have to promote things, right? Um, I find putting like four little pins or three little pins on the bottom lets it sit nicer. So you can have a lot of fun with the fabrics on these. I've just been using fabrics for my stash. I call this one pup cake. That's what my mom calls dogs. She calls them pup cakes. Um, this little Heidi Kinney cozy cocoa fabric, bikes. And then I have fun with some of the puns like this one's eat crow. This is kind of my favorite pin cushion to use right now. And I'll like put needles through the ruffle. You can do the clover clips. I think I'm gonna design a fabric <laughs> just for my own use that segments my pie slice into different types of things. And I was even thinking of experimenting of putting a piece of stiffener halfway point, you know, right here, so that things couldn't push much further past that. But this is how I've solved the needle thing getting pushed down into my pin cushions is I just put them on the ruffle there. I have four and 20 blackbirds, although there's only six. And that's a fabric I just designed really quickly, obviously. It's not very great. You can barely see the little beak. <laughs> Hi, Cheyenne, how's it going? Moon pie. I know my friend Laura Jean really loves this one with the constellation ruffle. I designed this fabric too, humble pie, and I just print it out in my printer. And you'll also notice like this one, the crest is denim, this is canvas, and this is wool felt. Um, I always used to make them in the wool felt but um, lately, I'm kind of really liking the canvas and the denim because it's really crisp. I mean, it looks actually like a pie slice. I have cherry pie. I just got this fabric and spoon flower earlier in the month. I thought it'd be kind of fun, but I struggled to figure out what fabrics to put with it. Obviously, cherries on the inside, they don't quite match, but you know. And then I kind of went with the metal pan that it was sitting in for this because I was kind of desperate for a fabric choice, so. That's why it's funny because it's really easy to find fabrics and then sometimes it's really hard. So I find doing something a little contrast works, you know, like the, the, this is cow pie. My friend gave me these two fabrics from her stash and um, I just had a little fun with it. So, and then obviously I've been making them up a storm. I'm gonna put these completely out of my way. And just so you know, I'm not, I'm not sure really, oops. Sorry. <laughs> Thanks, Rachel. They're really fun. They're, I'm having a lot of fun making them and they're really quick once you know how to put it together. And the hand sewing is very minimal because if you know me, you know I don't like to do hand sewing very much. So <laughs> I'm making a cupcake today that is sprinkles on the top. And then I've got this batik ruffle with a blue bottom for the paper. I cut out a piece of stiffener for the bottom because I've been doing that a little bit occasionally. And I was in the process of cutting out a piece of blueberry pie. So I'll finish that. This is the pattern, how it looks. It's nine pages, including the pattern pieces. You get written instructions. You get all the yardage requirements. I love big fonts. Here's the pattern pieces. And then uh, you don't get this, but you get pattern pieces and the instructions. And it also comes with a how-to video. So if you don't want to watch this playback every time, you have a how-to video that's very clipped, you know, like it keeps going. It's not edited. So, hi, Ray. <laughs> Your pressure's showing. Oh, no. Yay. Oh, nice. Thanks. <laughs> yeah, you gotta pay the bills first. Hi, Maribel. Maribel, thank you for your um, Patreon patronage. I don't know how to say that yet. <laughs> Hi, bye, Ray. Good luck with your pressure sewing. It's the worst kind of sewing. It really is. Okay, so let me set this aside. I haven't made one of these in a, a little bit. 
So let's see here. I have some wool felt that I'm gonna do for the bottom of this blueberry pie. I have all my pattern pieces traced onto a cardstock and it does make it nice to trace around them. You don't have to do it that way. Um, one of my pattern pieces isn't traced on there. I just use a ruler for it because I know the measurements of it. This isn't wool felt per se. This is more like wool fabric. It's actually really nice. I think it was actually really expensive um, that I bought on, on a trip, but I love this color. Sorry, it's a little dark, but the, the, because I'm changing between a lot of fabrics today, I find that it'll get a little overexposed really quickly. My stream will tell you I am chronically trying to adjust it. And then they're like, no, it's too bright. So <laughs> I will spare you. All right, so the four pieces that you're going to use for the crust are these crazy looking pieces here. And um, to identify them, this one right here is the top. This one goes underneath the top. So it's this little lip right here. I know you're probably thinking, oh my God, this looks like a nightmare to sew. I promise, you, my stream watched me figure out an easier way to sew this and I did it. So pretty proud of it. And then this is also the crest, the bottom, this is the outer, and then this is the little inner edge right here. All right. Now, if you're using wool felt, wool felt doesn't really have a grain line anymore once it's been felted, so you can kind of move them around on your fabric. I do give some tips if you're buying fabrics that are limited in size, like sometimes they're only selling the fabrics in like fat quarter or what they call felt squares, you know. This just doesn't fit anywhere in here very nicely, does it? We'll do that. I find it a little easier to cut these out if you just trace them. You need these two notches for the opening for when you go to stuff it at the very end. And that's the spot you're gonna hand sew. So that's all the hand sewing that it is. And I find hand sewing things like wool felt to be pretty easy, like easier than other things. Hi, Rachel, how's it going? Good to see you. We've had another Rachel in the stream lately too. Yesterday I almost thought it was you and I was like, wait, but other Rachel's usually blue. All right, so we have this and this one here. I don't give cutting layouts for this because typically you're probably going to be using some scraps that you have laying around. You probably had to buy one of the fabrics. Oh, but I know what I was gonna tell you before I dropped those pieces. There is um, spoon flower sale starting on Monday for 15% off all fabric. And then Wednesday, wait, Monday and Wednesday or Monday and Tuesday? I'm probably not even supposed to mention it. They just told told me because I, I have fabrics up there for sale. So they kind of give designers an overlay for a promo. Um, but it's a great time to get some of these novelty prints at a better deal. But they're having 50% off on fat quarters. So <clears throat> fat quarters are really great shape and size for lots of these small projects. That is so dark. Wow, is it prom time? Oh my goodness. Your, what, what do you mean your dress form died? How does your dress form die? What happened? Do we need to like have a memorial for her? That, that's, that is very sad. All right, so I'm gonna start setting these up. Now, if you are, um, do you have any questions, please pipe up and just ask me. There's just no dumb questions and there's no reason to be, um, you know, worry about it at all. Um, I understand being nervous. Lots of reasons for that. <laughs> Lots of good reasons for that. But um, you're, in good, you're in good company here. And I'm gonna move pretty quick on the cutting if there aren't questions, just so we can get to the sewing part because I feel like that's where mostly people really would like the assistance. This isn't a piece of clothing, so you can just, you know, do whatever you want for the cutting. I'm just giving you the reference of what pattern piece is which, so you kind of know what the fabric, you know, where it's gonna look, um, what it's gonna look like, where it's gonna be at. 
All right, let's get rid of this. I had a few extra fabrics here, especially because, you know, like this, this was a spoon flower fat quarter. I printed it on the canvas. The canvas is, a, is looks like it's really expensive per yard, but it's much wider. Oh, I'm sorry, Rachel. That's so sad. <laughs> you need to clone her. So, you know, I really played around with how I wanted the lattice to look on the pie, you know? So you have lots of options. That's why it's good to know where the pattern pieces go. For the filling, I have uh, some fabrics here to do pie, you know, like the math kind. <laughs> and then I have sweet potato. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna put you right there. And I'm gonna put you, actually I'm gonna put you guys all over here. I've got the dropsies today. All right, so I already have my blueberry filling for this piece, but I am gonna cut out another um, pie so you can see me cut those out, and I have the ruffle. The ruffle and the filling are very similar pattern pieces, and I always confuse the two. So make sure you read it. All right, so I'm gonna make uh, this pizza pie, which is in a, kind of in a way, it kind of grosses me out. <laughs> But I think it's funny, so I'm going to do it anyway. So I'm going to do the, um, this was a fat quarter on spoon flour to make a pizza cut and sew pillow. And again, see I picked the, the canvas, so that's why I'm getting more, a little bit more of it repeating. And that's because typically they will have like uh, fat quarters geared towards fabrics that weigh, measure 44 inches wide. And when I say fat quarter, what I mean is when you're buying fabric at the fabric store and you buy by the yard, typically your fabric store definitely does quarters, halves, three quarters, and full yards. Some of them do thirds, some of them do eighths. So when you're buying a quarter yard, that's nine inches of fabric. So say this is the bolt of fabric right actually we'll fold it because it's folded on the bolt like regular fabric right so this is your bolt of fabric they will measure off nine inches right and then this is your quarter yard with a fat quarter what they do is they measure 18 inches right they cut it off and then they also cut it down the fold so then you have a more of a squarish shape so it's basically two quarter yards side by side and then cut down the middle. Pizza pie, brown sugar. Hi, Eliza. Oh, awesome. You're having your, your daughter and your granddaughter. That'll be fun. <laughs> that sounds nice. Okay, so I'm gonna use this as the, the um, bottom crust. I know, it's kinda, it's kinda weird totally weird it's not kind of weird it's totally weird but hey I've been all about the puns with the pie slice I kind of want to do a steak and kidney pie I have a fabric I designed that I'm going to print in my home <laughs> printer and it has cutie so I can have cutie pie and when I say that I'm designing fabrics and printing them at home one of these days, maybe I should just do a little tutorial because um, I really enjoy it. I've been doing it for years and I use, I don't use that. Where is it? Oh, here it is. I changed the packaging. I use this. So I, yeah, it is spoon flour, Eliza. I, so, and that's why I say wait for that. Wait for that fat quarter sale when they're 50% off because here is the deal. When you buy a fat quarter on spoon flour, it costs the same as a half yard. They don't sell fabric by the half yard. They sell it by the full yard, the swatch, and the fat quarter. Swatch is eight inches by eight inches, and you can actually get a lot of these pieces in the swatches. But not like the pie would be a kind of a struggle. The cupcake is a little easier. 
And you can have a lot of fun with just getting a swatch of fabric for five bucks and then you know you can um, piece that together or whatever, right? So um, I wait till those 50% off fat quarter sales because it actually makes the price of a fat quarter. I like getting the canvas because you get more fabric and I like the weight of it. It feels a little bit more positive when you're putting in the pins and the pin cushion. You don't have to. I use quilting cotton. I use poplin. I use I use everything. So, so anyway, if you want to design your own fabric, I really got the hang of this stuff, and it doesn't take much. I'm just gonna cut you to the fastest and best way to do it. Make sure you get the June Taylor Iron On Quick Fuse fabric sheets for inkjet printers, unless you have a laser, she has a laser laser option. Um, and then this is the fusible fabric. You don't have to get the fusible kind. Just don't get heat transfer paper, um, and then pick your background color. There's white or cream. Just It doesn't matter what you pick, but it, if you get cream, it'll have a cream background wherever you don't print, right? And so this is how I printed the, um, where's that humble pie? Well, this one right here. So I just wrote the word humble over and over and over again and put it in different fonts. I can get three per page. And then I just print it out. I just did that in Word. <laughs> no fancy graphic program. For the Blackbird one, I did print that on Spoonflower, but originally I printed it at uh, on my printer. Um, and the reason I didn't continue doing that is because my printer started dying. I, I had a lot of um, issues with my printer because I printed sh so many thousands of shipping labels with it, it kind of ruined it. So it is totally washable, Louise. Yeah. Yeah, you can have a lot of fun. The, the limitation is the size. It's eight and a half by 11. But if you want to make a custom little project for someone, and so what I recommend also is get the package of 10. It comes in packages of three pages or 10 pages and use the 40% off coupon. You can get it at Joann Fabrics or just buy it online. That is my recommendation. That stuff works great. It, the print quality is so good. Photographs everything. The heat transfers are, heat transfers are tricky because heat transfers, you have to flip whatever you're doing so that it's mirror image, right? And then you print it, and then you have to iron it onto something, and that doesn't, and it does not last as long. This looks way nicer. So if you're sewing it in, I totally recommend those things. I made my labels for chicken boots for years with those, and it was still cheaper to do it that way when I finally got a vendor and made 10,000 of them. It was, I just didn't have the time. Like if I paid myself 25 bucks an hour to make my own labels. It was still cheaper than having them made. I got it down to a science, you know? So anyway, let's get this weird piece of fabric off my table. So let's see, should we just go with this point right here? I mean, that looks pretty pizza-ish. Maybe this one right here, I like that. I mean, how could it not look pizza-ish? What am I saying? <laughs> you want the one without the edge. This one doesn't matter as much. I just try and, like if you're really trying to save your fabric and you don't need this under lip to match, then just, you know, do whatever. You could do this, you know, whatever you want, so. I, you can tell I'm not really caring about the grain line. Um, can make a difference, but honestly, we're gonna be gentle. It's gonna be fine. I think getting the best fabric and having the most fun with it is the most important part of these projects. Let's cut a little bit of this off. You can find anything on spoon flour. That is for dang sure. That was the only sweet potato fabric I could find though. And I like it, but um, it's, you know, it doesn't scream sweet potato to me. So I didn't end up making it for a, a Thanksgiving example. Dang, I'm already getting all marked up from my pen.
Because I'm drawing my pattern pieces on there, I don't really feel the need to clip the notch. It'll be pretty visible to me while I'm sewing. I am cutting off the line though, best I can. These interior corners are always so tricky when you're using a rotary knife, so be really careful. A really good method is to, you know, roll into there and then pick this up and then roll in again and then go past like this so you don't clip it. We're not making clothing, so the green line's not as key. Pattern placement is everything. Spoon flower is totally overwhelming, Louise. Just be decisive. Or you know what I do sometimes is I do get overwhelmed. I put them in my cart or I put them on a wish list and then I come back and then I, um, I'm kind of like just go by gut feeling, you know, or I set myself a budget. I'm like, all right, I only want five spoon, uh, fat quarters. Because what I do is, if I'm in a hurry, I use my spoon dollars because I earn like a few dollars a month on my fabric. And um, I use that to pay for expedited shipping. <laughs> That's how I get away with it. Okay, so I have a blueberry and a pizza pie now. All cut out. Oh, I need a ruffle for my pizza pie. Oh, I need the filling. What am I talking about? I need a few things for my pizza. I'm just gonna do this weird orange fabric. I was having trouble figuring something out, and so I just decided to go with a solid pie. You know? It's got a nice texture on the other side. And for those of you wondering what Twitch is, um, because I do mention it, uh, it is another live streaming platform. There is actually quite a few. Twitch and YouTube are definitely the most popular. Facebook does it. Um, Mixter. Did I just say that right, Mixter? Uh, Vimeo has it now. Uh, there's another one. It's just another live streaming platform. I like it because you can zoom in. And um, it's geared only towards live streaming. I can't upload both videos to it, so it's why I do both. All right, so we're gonna do that for my filling. Now I just need my ruffle for the pie. And so this is what I'm thinking. I was going to use a little plaid fabric for, for the uh, ruffle for the pizza. And I, it just, I don't know, it just wasn't speaking to me. I got this other pizza fabric. It's pretty cute. So you can have a vegetarian option, which I think is actually, this fabric's kind of cute. I printed this on the linen cotton canvas, so it's not ideal for my ruffle. The ruffle being on a lighter weight fabric is the easiest to handle. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm only going to cut it one layer. I'll try both layers, so I'm gonna cut out the whole piece and then I'm gonna cut it out and cut it down maybe when I get to the machine. I have a feeling though it's not gonna work, so maybe I'll just cut it out, cut it right now. I think this looks more pizza parlor-ish, you know? I think I'm already getting hungry. I was a little excited about today's stream, so I'm like, oh, maybe I'll see some chicken boots peeps. <laughs> okay, so let's see. What's the width of this? It's three inches. So how do I want to deal with the edge? So the reason I'm saying this is too thick for the ruffle is it just is. It's it's kind of, I could try it. It'll be fine. It'll work. Um, it'll just be a lot of work. It'll be a little harder. And I'm not about making things harder, you know? So I could just make it one-sided and just hem the other, hem the edge like this. It'd be a lot easier to do. Or I could... Um, Surge the edge or, or roll hem it with my serger. I'm not going to do that because I'd have to convert my machine. But there is a few options. So we'll just leave it for now and see what we think when we get there. But I think that would look the best for the pizza. And we're all about what looks best. All right, so I thought I'd make a Santa cupcake. 
So the last one I'm gonna cut out. I made this fabric into an oven mitt yesterday and it turned out really cute. I'm not known for making holiday oriented things. Um, so I'm kind of I'm kind of cracking myself up that I'm kind of into this. Um, and I was thinking like it is Santa and he has a belt right here. I'm not sure my pattern piece is big enough to include his belt. You know, and then I was gonna put a green ruffle around the middle, so it'll probably look more like this. And then I was gonna put a black bottom like it's his boots. What do you guys think? And maybe I could do <clears throat> two of the sections. You see there's four sections, right? I can do two sections with Santa and two maybe with the all over print, you know? I thought that might be kind of cute. Um, I, you know, there are a lot of folks out there that really like seasonal supplies. We definitely did a little bit of that with chicken boots stuff. So let's make the ruffle first. I, I'm act literally wearing a shirt in this fabric right now. <laughs> so, sorry. I was like looking everywhere for a green. And I saw this on the shelf and I was like, oh yeah, I forgot about that fabric. And I was like, you're literally wearing a shirt in that fabric right now. All right, so the ruffle for the cupcake is two inches by 18 inches long. You cut the pattern piece on the fold. Pattern piece is two by nine. It's the only one I haven't cut out. Oh, dang, I'm using my regular ruler to draw. Shoot. I have a, I have a messy ruler that I usually draw up against. Cause see now look, I have a big old black ink line on my ruler. Yeah, I know it's kind of a weird pet peeve, but when you handle your rulers all the time, um, your hand that ink just sits there and then it gets on your hand and then you, it, you get it on your fabric or your clothes worse, right? Definitely ruined plenty, plenty of clothes in my pattern drafting days. Okay, so this is pretty lightweight yarn dyed fabric. Came, it comes in tons of different colors at my local fabric store. I made this shirt for a display for them. I didn't get it for like a year, so I, I thought I'd get to wear it last Christmas or at my 20 year high school reunion this year. Nope, I didn't get it. <laughs> I got it like right afterward. I was like, <laughs> why did I do that? Okay, so let's see, let's aim for this, this dude here. Um, and how about this dude here? And then I have the only pom-poms I own right now because I gave away all of my pom-poms and all my fruit print fabrics when I closed chicken boots. Um, the only pom-poms I have are actually Christmas pom-poms. But I've been making some with a felt I have and just needle felting them. All right, so here's two. This is this is so unlike me, you guys. I just, I don't even have a Christmas tree up. Mainly because my family's like, me. So you want your, make sure, if you're using the print out, you're not gonna be in danger. But I think I, I did just flip this by accident. So I can't use this. So you see how the top here kind of goes off to the right like this. Just make sure you cut four the same way. And see, I cut these two going this way and I cut that that way. So we're gonna have to recut this piece. And the, um, that is the top right here. This little whoop de doo at the top there. This is the base of the cupcake, and I think the pattern is far better illustrated, so. Oh, it does, Rachel? Great. Hi, Beverly, how's it going? <laughs> That's a good tip, I love that. I don't, oh, actually, I think I do have hairspray. That's funny. I just cut that wrong again. <laughs> All right, 
So let's just recut the Santas. I really want his belt in there. You know? Get those out of my way so I don't accidentally use them. I have that dude, right? What's the dude I have right now? Oh, he's facing that way. This one's facing, okay, here we go. All right. I have all my tops now cut correctly. I could have used this right here as the uh, ruffle. I like the coordination when that happens. It looks pretty cool. But um, I also like the contrast of it too. The contrast really sets each fabric off. It kind of goes back to my binding days. And hey, you guys, can you believe it? We're not binding anything today. Man, I made everybody bind a lot of stuff this week. Oh, really? Oh, interesting. That's cool. Yeah, I know like the protein stains are, are specific, you know, that you have to deal with. I use a um, page from my fabric science textbook from college for stains. It works great. Like there's a page in there and it has everything on it. My problem really is that when I'm at my washing machine, I don't have my glasses on. <laughs> I can't read it. <laughs> Oh man. Okay. So we have now our little Santa dude. See all those little points going the same direction. I have this massive piece of canvas here. And I only need it for these two pieces here for your cupcake base. I'm using canvas for this one, um, and I'm using felt for the other one, so we'll sew one of each. Just in case you're following more closely along with the instructions and using the wool felt. Wool felt's the classic way that I always used to do it. I used to even like go across the street to the playground and get a handful of pea gravel from the parking lot and weight my pin cushions like that too. So the only drawback to that is you, you need to, you don't need much um, and you need it to be at the bottom because you don't want any of your sharp needles and pins to touch the pebbles. All right, so I'm gonna notch this since I can't see the notch on the black. I meant to get my needle felting supplies out. I'm going to try and cut this. I'm going to use my little, these littler blades, the smaller diameter are easier for the, sm the curves. People often wonder why to have a small one. There are smaller ones than this. I used to only use this size. It was a little limiting for layers though. All right, so it's right here. Okay. Never seen that one. One, two, three, four. Perfect. I've just been using this to stuff. I sent my daughter to Michael's to get stuffing one day. This is what she came home with. I've used an entire bag on all the cupcakes and pie slices I've made lately. I have enough for maybe one more. It takes about this much. You can see it scrunches up pretty tight. So I probably have enough for one more. All right, I think we're ready to start sewing. Oh, I'm gonna cut a um, few extra pieces in the stiffener. And let's see, I don't really feel like I need it for the pie. If you're using a lighter weight fabric, like when I did the canvas on the um, cherry pie, didn't I just get that out? Is it right in front of me? That cherry pie slice is a little lightweight. Oh, here it is, it's just upside down. So you can see, see how my little tip here is flaring up? 
I, I underestimated the canvas for being heavy enough. And so what I would recommend is if you use the canvas, the lighter canvas, because this canvas is much thicker than this canvas, you can interface it, which would be a really easy solution. Um, if you have stiffener around, you can cut a piece with stiffener and you can do the bottom and the top. And I would just do the big filled in triangles, these two to um, kind of help stabilize the point. I added this piece of stiffener to this one after I'd already sewn it together and that's why it's a little kind of kooky. And then I'm gonna add a piece to the bottom of the cupcake as well and I just use this one and I trim a little bit off. You can use it the exact same size if you want. It'll be a little easier to sew if you just trim it away and then you just slip it in there before you stuff it. So there's a couple ways to do that. So we will trace some for the pizza since I used a lighter weight canvas and we'll try it out. I haven't tried one with stiffener in a while. So I'm kind of curious to see how difficult it can make it. I think um, interfacing is an easier choice because it means that you're using a piece of layer or a piece of fabric that's a single layer, which is always easier to use. Anytime you can make all your layers into one you know, manageable, piece, it makes it a little easier to navigate it. Okay. You don't need notches on this piece. And then like I said, I'm just going to cut off like a quarter of an inch around the perimeter. I find it a little easier. That was really badly drawn, I know. It's gonna be inside, it'll be okay. I'm pretty good at sewing a perfect circle, but I'm not that good, so this is probably close to what my circle will end up looking like anyway, right? All right, so I'm gonna switch my camera and my um, microphone over to the machine, and I'll see you there in a second. Um, let's see, this, this is the one. I have a little thumbnail so I don't make you sick while I'm rotating cameras. <laughs> Okay, why is this? I noticed this yesterday. I was sewing here last night, but I was like, why did the camera get all weird? I push it out of my way so I don't bonk it, you know? All right, so. I <laughs> stay. Oh my God. Okay. All right, it keeps drifting, huh? How's that look? Do you guys want more light? I have a little magnet here because um, one of my pin cushions, I put in a um, magnet on the bottom. So, um, oh, that's smart, a mini travel. I didn't even see that. Do I have a special, how come I didn't see these? 
comments. Um, do I have a special device to needle felt? Yes, I just have a, a needle felting needle. Um, and I can show you that. I have to go get that out of my, my bin though. And I, I wish I would have done that when I, <laughs> when I was getting ready. Okay, let's see here. Make sure everything's going good. Oh, I know why it's zoomed in. That's what's going on. Okay, so let's zoom this out a little bit. The little slider is so dinky. And I use a mouse with my left hand. And um, even though I'm right-handed, it still is a little tricky. I just do it to save my hands. All right, let's turn my machine on. We're ready to go. I'm probably gonna run out of thread actually. Like my main spool, it's getting lower. Let's see, I think I'm going to stick to cream throughout. All right, what do you guys wanna sew first? Cupcake or high slice? <laughs> what, really Rachel? Is that what you call treats? Cause see, I can't say the word treat in my house. We call it the T word. Same with walk, walks. We have to say W. Are you going to take the dogs for a W? <laughs> All right, do you guys want pie or cupcakes? I'll probably, I think I can get to both. Cupcake, okay. All right, so here we go. Here's my pie. I might need to change my thread color for the Santa. Okay, so um, I kind of want to look at my directions and see what I told you guys to do so I do it in the same order. I've been trying to do this more, not, more often. Okay, so I do the ruffle first. Oh, I do the top first, the ruffle, the base, base the top. Okay, so we're gonna do the top first. All right, so here's all four of your little cupcake pieces, right? Wait, oh, you guys, I, I put the, okay. <laughs> so like I said, you have to have all four of your cupcake pieces. I'm sorry, you guys. I put that fabric, um, I rare, very rarely, in fact, I can't remember the last time I cut all four of the same exact top where I didn't fussy cut a picture. So I usually am tracing each one out. So now I have, because I put the fabric, I just folded it over and cut all four at one time. I have two facing the incorrect way. So let me just go get my piece of fabric and um, let's see if my iron camera, we can cut it right here at my iron camera. I just need to activate it. Yeah, so I'll cut it right there. I need these two pieces right here. Sorry about that, you guys. Never pays to rush the cutting, does it? Blades nicer. I can always use these as long as I cut two more facing the same way. It doesn't really matter which way they go. You just have to have all four going the same way. Oh, you have a border collie. That's awesome. Okay, here we go. So you have your four cupcakes. You have your base, the bottom, and your ruffle, okay? So you're gonna take your 
cupcake pieces and because I have white fabric it's kind of a good idea to get rid of this ink because that can show through. I'm not too worried about it on the bottom but on these side pieces you might see that showing through on your seam so it's up to you. So you're going to put these right sides together. I know this is a little tricky to sew these little curves but it's not for very long and you only do four. The last one's the trickiest but it's going to be okay. All right, so you're going to do quarter inch seam allowance. I'm going to put my stitch length a little lower because it was pretty big. And I like to hold this piece up while I go because then I can just manipulate it and I just walk my machine along this curve, lifting up my presser foot. And I'm pulling this over a little past the, so I can keep it lined up. I'm keeping the raw edges lined up. And when I get down here, line it up. And then I have my quarter inch seam. I'm going to open it up and then I'm going to top stitch it. Just push the seam allowance one direction and be consistent. You're going to do the exact same thing. So your seam allowance right here, you're going to put the point past that about a quarter inch. And I'm going to, let's see, I'm going to just start sewing at where this seam line is right here. I can't remember what works the best here. I've tried it a few different ways. Same thing. And I'm going to push it to the side and top stitch it. This is one more. So you see I'm pushing this raw edge a quarter of an inch past the seam right here. Like that. That way it'll still line up at the bottom. And then I start sewing at the seam. Anytime you're doing these rounded tops on something where all the points meet, you, you got to be a little bit clever and think about how it's going together. I'm going to top stitch again. I don't know why I'm backstitching on the top stitch. It's not necessary. All right, and now you have your last seam, which is the trickiest. And you're going to fold this right sides together. I like to go from the bottom up on this one. And sometimes I nail it and sometimes I don't. Like this one doesn't look like I'm going to nail. <laughs> I can just kind of tell. Because you're trying to get all of this, all this little tip. In fact, I'm just going to clip a little bit of it off into the seam. Now remember, your pom is going to cover this up, right? You have a backup plan. So I like starting at the bottom only because it's easy to start there, right? I am not even holding it yet. When you get up here, it is a little tricky, so you just want to make sure you try and keep the seam together. And I'm going to pull underneath to keep it lined up. back stitch. I'm just going to trim these threads right here. And now because I started from the bottom, it would be really easy to take it, push the seam that way and top stitch it, but I was top stitching it going that way. So push your seam the same direction you've been doing. Oh, and see, I didn't really catch part of that. So let me try and catch a little bit right here. I'm a little out of practice. <laughs> I went a little too far. <laughs> I went a little too far. I'm not making this easy look easy to sew today, am I? Sorry guys. Which where where is that? So remember, I can why did I do that? Yeah, you can go bottom up on all the pieces, Louise. That totally works too. What did I just do? I did this one right here, right? That makes me mad that I just did that. I've never done that to correct it. Am I blushing? <laughs> uh, that's why I like to overexpose the camera so you can see, can't see how often I blush. And I'm hot. I'm hotter than Hades right now. All right, let me get that out, see? 
So I have this little piece right there. That's what I want to fix right here. So let's just take that out and we'll fix it. There we go. Let's look at it and we'll push it in there. So I, sometimes when I'm like, okay, what's happening in there? I look in here, I'm like, all right, what am I trying to do? I'm trying to get this guy right here into the seam allowance, right? You don't wanna just cut it all off because then you'll have raw edges that you're gonna have to deal with. Yeah, take my sweater off. I know, I think I'm gonna turn the heat off. Now, if I don't nail it this time, I'm just going to bank on the fact that my pom-pom is my saving grace, you know? So it's not too bad. I have a little bit, I have a little tuck right there. And I'm actually not gonna sit there and fuss with it because I might make it worse and my pom-pom can go right there and no one will ever see. So I just need to top stitch this side right here so I don't forget to do that. It is a little thick right here because my seam allowance turned back on itself. That's why I'm having a little trouble. I don't need to get all the way through the top. I just need to make it look like it goes into the top so that the pom-pom will um, cover it up. That's all. All right, so now we have our sprinkles. <laughs> I promise I've sewn them better before. Watch the how-to video. <laughs> All right, now take your ruffle, put it right sides together, short ends. You're gonna make a seam right there. And now put it wrong sides together, lining up this long raw edge all the way around. You can press this and it'll behave a little bit better be a little easier to handle and stop doing that where it see it's like it's flipping wants to uh, be flat I'm just going to finger press mine and now when I put in my gathering stitch oh so the next thing you want to do is uh, put a notch so fold it in half. This is the seam end. See, there's the seam right here. Fold it in half, and I want you to notch the midway point on the raw edge. Just a little nip in it. Not big, just something visible. I always like doing that along the corner, cutting the corner off, so that I can see it when it's gathered. It'll be a little easier to find. All right, so now when I put the gathering stitch, this is actually my least favorite part of sewing anything is when I have to put in gathering stitches. I don't know why, I just don't like it. I like it when it's something like an easing stitch on a sleeve or a pocket, but I don't know why gathering stitches are just never my thing. I like garments that have it, but then when I go to sew it, I'm like, oh yeah, I have to like gather this whole darn skirt on here, you know? So what I like to do to make gathering easier is I split it up into two halves because if you put one long gathering stitch, you can totally do that. The, you run the risk of breaking the thread as you're doing it, and it also um, just makes it a little e harder to ease it into the right amount. This way you can just do it in sections, right? I also recommend two rows, and I know my narrow seam allowance of a quarter inch is a little challenging for that, but you can just do your best or just do one row. This is a batik, so it's actually kind of nice. Um, I like to usually go behind the seam, and then all the way around, just past that halfway point right there. I do two rows on this side and two rows on that side. And I kind of try and make the gathering stitches, the starts and the stops, like inner, inner, uh, like mingle, you know, like overlap each other. That way you don't get flat spots in your gathering. Because if you make them butt up like this, and you start gathering, you can't keep gathers all the way up to the edge of where your gathering stitches start. It's just not possible. They'll, they'll start falling off the edge of your, your um, beginning or your end. So that's why having them overlapped kind of decreases the chance of getting a flat spot in your gathering. So you can always take out your gathering stitches. And that's why it's okay to go a little bit past your seam allowance. 
All right, so I'm going to do, there's one row. I'm going to do one more. I'm going to leave a little room for this side to go in between those two. Two rows, though, makes your gathering stitches look really, really nice. I have an automatic thread cut on mine, so I have to lift up the presser foot and do the whole thing. All right, so now I'm going to start with this one, this end. Now try not to stitch over your threads, your gathering stitches. It'll be easier to deal with later. All right, I just kind of move them out of the way, part them. For lack of a better term. You can overlap them even more. If you're doing clothing, I would overlap them a little bit more. This one I'm just going to butt up to the end there because I'm running out of space. Or not, maybe. Let's see, I just ran my thread, my needle came unthreaded. That's the sewing fairy telling me something, by the way. <laughs> What's she telling me? Okay, she wasn't that unhappy. All right, All right, so now we have two rows. Yeah, I know I need new scissors. I have 12 pairs sitting right next to me. And I should just switch them out. All right, so then you're going to take the two ends of one of your sections. So just make sure you don't grab one end going that way and one that way. So let's see, on this one, it's this end right here. Make sure nothing is on top of itself. Like this one right here, I can see a little bit of extra thread. There we go. All right, so we have this one here and this one here. Those two go together. So you see all these little fibers starting to stick up from the cut edge? My trick is that I try not to touch that edge. I kind of try and keep my thumb and finger below this cut edge to kind of decrease on the amount of, you know, fibers. Right, Rachel? Oh my gosh. Yeah, I do like the, um, when it's something like that, like tool, something really lightweight like that, I will use my serger with the differential. It really is nice. But I don't find that the differential is enough for things like a skirt to a dress. And you know, I'll be like, oh, maybe this time it'll be okay and I'll do it and it's not quite enough. And then I'm like, dang, I had to put a gathering stitch on top of what I gathered, which is just not ideal. All right, so I'm ooching this along. Now, what's nice about batiks is that they're really lightweight. The thing that's not nice is that they're very tightly woven. That is nice in a lot of instances. Here, you can kind of feel it. I can feel it's kind of squeaky, you know? Like it's definitely, if, I, if it were tight, it would break. All right, so I'm gonna just do part of it and now I'm gonna meet it from the other end. You always like to, you always wanna meet your gathers, like pull equally from each end because otherwise you run the risk of pulling your gathering stitches straight through, you know, just like your draw cord on your hoodie sweatshirt hood and you pull it through, that's what'll happen. And it's definitely happened to me and it's very sad. That's why two rows is also a nice backup plan. Because if one breaks or you pull one all the way through, you just don't want to have to start over. Like you just really can't sew in between your gathers once it starts gathering up. All right, so I'm just going to gather it up a little bit more. And let's see, I have half of my cupcake now. So if you want a little visualization, it goes in two sections, right? So I actually gathered it up a little more than I needed to. So that's good to know. It's always less than I think. All right, so let's see. There's one seam. I'm just eyeballing it. I'm not being scientific. All right, perfect. All right, so now let's do our other side now. We don't have to do very much. In the how-to video, I had a pre-gathered piece. I think I sewed in the gathering and then I um, just picked up one because this takes so long. This is kind of the longest part of the entire cupcake because after this it goes really fast. Oh really? 
Oh, of course I could, Rachel. I mean, it's so true. I mean, I, I have a binding foot, right? <laughs> but I have to change out the throat plate for that. Do you have to change out the throat plate? It's just not worth it if I'm going to, if I'm not going to do a ton, you know, I'm not even using my binding machine for things. I'm not production sewing anymore. It's crazy. All right, so I'm going to finish with this end. I mean, right now you're getting like, it almost looks like a troll doll. There's so much hair everywhere. It's looking kind of crazy. Depending on your fabric, it might be really thready right now, especially like the canvases that are a little bit lighter weight or linens. Um, they are definitely probably getting thready on you. Come on, I just need a little bit more. Okay. All right, so now we have our little ruffle here. We have lots of threads. So try and orient them towards the raw edge of the ruffle, towards the center. Because that's the raw edge and that's the seam allowance and it'll go in the seam. All right, so now you're gonna just place it over your cupcake, but you're gonna line up the raw edges together. So what you wanna do is find your seam. There's my seam and then where is my halfway point? Remember I cut that little divot. There's my halfway point. It's also easy to find because I have my start and stops for my gathering stitches. So it's a nice little spot. Now take those and then flip them to match to a seam across from each other like this. Raw edges together. Okay. So I, I'm going to straighten all this out. I'm just going to get it going first. So I'm going to here, I'm going to flip this to this one and this to this one. Start pulling all of these threads to the raw edge, just like this. Elliptical feed dog. What does that mean? Is that what? <laughs> I am not an expert in machines. <laughs> I know my machine really good. Right, Rachel? I know. Yeah, I, I totally get you. And I, I feel like a lot of beginning sewing projects for some reason have gathering in them. And it's such a frustrating thing to do. Like I just remember, maybe it was just because that's what I was attracted to when I was a beginning sewist. Everything I was sewing had a gathered skirt you know it was probably partly because it was the 80s and 90s too you know okay so i'm i'm just gonna put in a few pins here um if you're new here i i actually don't sew with a lot of pins but when it comes to gathers i really find them helpful you can see it's not laying totally flat but look at that little flat spot and look at those nice gathers right there so I definitely need to gather this up a little. And I, I felt a little bit of looseness over here. So maybe I'll just kind of shift this over here to this end. So I have some um, room to put some gathers in right there. Use my long threads. Where's the other one? I think that's it. All right, and now let's see this side. So again, I'm just kind of poking all that, all these threads to the raw edge. I do this a lot faster in the how-to video, but I can be a little more explanatory when I'm live with you. It's nice. Oh, okay, Rachel, that's interesting. I feel like I remember talking about that with my mechanic because he, he knew me and what I sewed. He'd watched me sew a lot. And so um, he kind of could appreciate what I liked. And finally, when I bought this machine, I actually bought this machine a year before I bought it and then I returned it because it wouldn't do what I needed it to do. I don't know what was going on with that machine. And they couldn't get it to either. It was really weird. And then a year later, I was like, I absolutely have to have a new machine now. And they were like, let's try it again. And it worked. Like the one I really wanted was gonna take um, three months to get. So. I settled for this and I really love it. Set in sleeves. Um, you know, Rachel, um, I do those a lot on the stream. I'm trying to think like, 
Anytime I've sewn the sh this shirt here, the Archer button-up, right? The Archer button-up has ease, you guys, right? The Archer button-up, um, the um, Hawthorne dress. These are the videos you can fast forward to the sleeve because I'm, I'm very good at easing in a sleeve and I really love doing it. And once someone taught me how to do it the way I do it, I, I, I really look forward to doing it. Um, Anytime I have a set in sleeve that there's ease, I think the most recent one would be the, um, what was that little shirt I did, you guys? Not the Lucerne. Um, the Scout, the Scout? Wait, wait, did I make the Scout? <laughs> With the floral? Yeah, it does, Leslie. Yeah, if I tilt back the head, see, you can tilt it back. That's where the oil pan is, it's underneath. All right, let's sew this on so I can get rid of this. This this kind of thing, like seeing that, it's like, ugh, all that thread in there. Look at that mess. <laughs> Probably doesn't look as messy to you guys, but it does for me. All right, so I'm gonna sew this on and I'm gonna try and stay to the left of my gathering stitches, but some of them are outside of my seam allowance, so it just depends on how much of my ruffle I wanna lose, right? I don't need to back tack quite yet, but I am gonna look at my gathers and kind of adjust them when I need to. Oh, let's put my stitch length back. This is, we're just tacking the ruffle on. This isn't the final seam because we still need to sew it to the base. This just gets it so that we don't have to worry about the gathers anymore. Um, you know, you could do this all in one step with your base, but it's just more finicky that way to do that. So, yeah, I'm trying to think, Rachel. Um, I should just do a video just on doing a set in sleeve because sometimes we just need that part, you know? Yeah, so the Archer button up, the Hawthorne dress. Um, anything with a cap that's not a drop shoulder is a set in sleeve is going to need the easing. So I'm using my awl right here and I'm just kind of like creating a few little gathers with it. That way uh, I don't have to worry about any flat spots. Um, I, I feel like it's the scout tee and the scout tee I did, I added ease to the sleeve and then sewed it because <laughs> that pattern I don't think had any ease and I was like mm, no I really love ease on the sleeve and and it's really I, I know a lot of um, new sewists will get a pattern and see all that ease and they think something's wrong with the pattern and they cut it off and you don't want to do that you absolutely don't want to do that you'll be really unhappy with your shirt it won't feel right it'll it'll feel really tight you really need that ease because you need it for this spot right here on your arm because the way that the sleeve is engineered it um only you only need the ease on the top part of the cap right there and it's because you need to add fullness that goes like this over this part this depth of your arm your upper arm the gush i call it the gush of your arm <laughs> so That'll be so nice, sewing lessons from your, for Christmas. What a nice gift. Okay, so I'm just gonna trim off all these threads. I'm not gonna put you through me removing all the gathering threads. I usually do. I like it, it's very satisfying. Okay. Just gonna make it look easier to deal with. There we go. All right, so now we're on to our base. You're gonna sew this right sides together quarter inch seam on the short ends of the base. Back stitch. We will be cutting or pulling it. Um, I like to flatten this seam out by just top stitching on either side of the seam. And I just go straight down. You don't need to back stitch. I wouldn't because your back stitch might show. It'll creep out from under the seam. And it just looks so nice when your top stitch disappears into the seam. All right, so now you're going to put your cupcake. Okay, so I actually advocate putting your um, pom-pom on now. I wish I had a pink one. I'm going to see if my needle felting sets close by so I can show you that. Okay, 
Let's see here. I went through a phase of being really into felting. <laughs> I've got it all crammed into this tiny little bin now. Let's see. So um, I use a needle that looks like this. Who is that that asked me? Was it Lu Louise or Eliza? This is kind of an old needle. Um, you need something to protect. We'll protect everything, basically. That'll, that'll do. Um, where's my brush? Here it is. Okay. You can wet felt a little pom-pom as well, but um, this is pretty quick. I don't need this. So you just put your felt. There's a whole science and principle behind it. But basically, I don't want that green in there. You're just doing this. I actually have a needle felting um, tool that has four needles that poke out of it, and it makes very quick work. You really don't want to catch your fingers. This is something Miriam Felton would probably demonstrate really great on her live stream. She streams on Twitch. Uh, Mim is making is her channel. But when you just do this, the little, um, the needle, mine's a little bent, and because of the wool fibers, they will grab each other. You can just sit here and do this for a while and it'll get a small little pom-pom. I kind of started with a really big piece. I could try and make it smaller, but it's already felting to itself, so I really can't make it any smaller at this point. But I could also felt it once it's on my cupcake. That's a gigantic pom-pom. It's kind of cute. <laughs> it looks like a big old piece of bubble gum. I got, I really enjoyed needle felting. I made a little owl. I'm doing the very, very quick and dirty version of needle felting right now. All right, so this will be our pom pom. It's so fast. It's really great to do with uh, kids. And some people are like, what kids? You wouldn't want to do that. that they'll poke themselves. They'll only poke themselves once. <laughs> they won't poke themselves twice. It's a good learning opportunity, in my opinion. All right, so I'm going to sew my little pom-pom onto my... Oh, I should use my side threading needle. Remember I told you guys I got the side threading needle. And now my, my uh, felt is... Uh, I've got these side threading needles. I'm sorry I'm so like clumsy today. You guys are so quiet. It makes me nervous when you guys are quiet. So I got these side threading needles and it's really great because my needle's threaded now. <laughs> That's why. All right, so I recommend doing this now only because um, it gets a little harder when your pom-pom is, your cupcake is done. Not impossible. It's just easier right now. This is the other thing. I don't really do fully on the website or the how-to video just because it takes a little bit. So we'll just put a few stitches in here. I kind of like this pom-pom. You can buy pom-poms at the craft store too. You don't have to do this. Or you could knit, a, um, you could make one with yarn. Yeah, Rachel, I'm totally, totally into these side threading needles. <laughs> I haven't used a self-threading one yet, but I'm liking the side threading. Thanks, Leslie. I can barely see any of the chat. It's so weird. Let me open this a little more. Oh, I do that. 
Yeah, exactly, Rachel. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's so funny. Like when my daughter was in preschool and um, people would say projects I would do with her. Like um, one time I think my friend stopped by and my daughter was in my pattern room with me. And she was sitting on my pattern table, on the one like behind me, that big table. She was just sitting up there with a regular pair of scissors cutting little bits of fabric. And none of my friend's kids even were using child scissors at all, you know? And they were like, oh my God. I was like, you know, come on. Is it, it's like, she's, she's never hurt herself once. You know, it's like she knew what to do. And giving, I feel like when you give children tools that are not very great, like child scissors, it's not enjoyable. They don't really want to do it. You know, they're just like, oh, I don't, okay, great. I got the job done, but that was kind of a struggle. You give them a nice tool, they're like suddenly interested, right? Because it works for them. Okay, I'm, I'm kind of keeping these separate. That's why I wanna make, you know, a specific pie slice. All right, so there's my gigantic bubble gum ball. Pom pom. All right, so you're gonna put your, <clears throat> you have your little cupcake base here. You're gonna put this top in here, right sides together, just like this. Um, you can take the side with the seam of your ruffle right there and line it up with this seam right here. Either way, just line up at least one of your cupcake top seams with this seam. It'll be a good guide. I know, right, Rachel? It's so funny. <laughs> All right, my friends were always like amazed at what I would let my daughter do, you know? But there's, she was just one of those kids where she was constantly needing to do something and she liked being around us, you know? It was either that or she would want to watch TV. That was just the way she was, you know? And so um, I would just, I, you know, I would be kind of bummed if I couldn't work as much as I wanted to in a day. I'm sewing this at a quarter inch seam allowance. Like I said, I just stuck the top in there and you're just sewing around. <clears throat> but sometimes I would just bring her to work with me and just let her do that. And she would design clothes. And I mean, when she was really little, she was designing clothes and making me sew them together. Give her a needle and thread, you know, let her... She wanted to knit really bad, um, but I waited for a while to teach her. I tried a couple times. All right, so that's what it looks like. And then you're just gonna, you can get a gander at it. Right? <laughs> this pom-pom's kinda cracking me up. Okay, so you can leave it. You don't need to turn it quite yet because you still need to put your bottom on. Now you have your two notches, right? So you have this notch here and your seam on the base and then your circle. So you're gonna do one notch to the notch and one notch to the seam. Now you're gonna leave about two inches open or how, whatever makes you comfortable for uh, turning it right side out and then hand sewing it shut. So I don't use pins, I just line it up it's not really that hard. Wool felt is so forgiving. And besides the fact that these both these pieces have a little bit of stretch in them if they're not wool felt, if they're doing it on like canvas or um, another woven fabric, it'll be a little stretchy because of the curves of the fabric, place it on bias. And bias is always stretchy. All right, so we're just gonna go around a little bit and decide when I don't want to turn like how how small the hole. So I left myself that much. And then we're gonna turn it right side out. Probably have to be a little careful with my pom-pom. So I didn't sew it on with but many stitches. There we go. And now it's ready to stuff. I like to kind of pull on this. Make sure it's all out. <clears throat> there we go. So now before we stuff, this is the other thing, I like to push this seam down here on the bottom, this curve. You can stick your circle in here. You might not be able to until you're almost done stuffing it. It just depends on um, how good you are at the stuffing. 
That's <laughs> funny, Rachel. I know, right? I didn't either. I would just be like, wait, I don't want to buy this twice. So I remember I trimmed a little bit off the stiffener and see, I mean, it's, it's fitting. I want to fuss with it and it's because it's butting up against the seam allowance, but there we go. So you're going to stuff it. It's pretty cute. A big old gigantic uh, felt ball is pretty funny. All right, so we'll do one more cupcake. What time is it? Oh, it's already 12.30. Wow, we're gonna do a pie slice. We're gonna do a pie slice. Just so that we're flipping back and forth, just in case folks wanna see one of either. All right, so um, I'm gonna do the blueberry pie and that's because I'm going to show you one little trick I like. Oh, in fact, I need a little piece of blueberry fabric. I'm gonna put little vent holes on the top. Yeah, it turned out cute. All right, we'll, uh, we'll start with some purple thread now. So I can make sure I uh, don't accidentally sew and cream on that really pretty purple. Can you tell me how many people are watching right now, you guys? Because I can't see it. And I just want to be able to know. It's so annoying. I can't, it just says started streaming. <laughs> I don't know where it's at anymore. What happened to everything? <laughs> oh, thank you, Louise. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Perfect. Okay, so I have this little piece of extra um, blueberry because one little trick you can do with your pie slice. Let me put the bobbin in. Is you can kind of cut holes in the top of your pie. You know, like when we do vents when we bake a pie. But you want to do it now. So let's see. Let's cut um, my classic thing that I always cut in my pie top crust is hearts. So let's cut a heart. Let's see. Uh, uh, <laughs> I just need somewhat of a guide. Here goes nothing. That's a big heart. That's okay. All right, so we have our filling, and so then I put the blueberry behind it. And I'm gonna just stitch around it. If you're doing something like wool felt, you can do this because it's not going to um, come un unraveled or anything. And it's a nice little effect. Maybe you put a different um, pin in the little heart. Sorry, my machine's really loud when I lift up the presser foot. My old one wasn't. So then we have a little heart here, and then I'll just trim this off underneath. There we go. All right, so now that's ready. Okay, so now you have your ruffle piece and you treat this ruffle a little different and it's a lot easier to sew. You're gonna sew the ends first, right sides together. 
Press the seam allowance towards the center front. Unless you have like a fancy way to do it. All right, now if you need to clip the corners, you can. Um, this is pretty lightweight fabric. I don't really need to. So now turn it to the right side. I would give it a good press with your iron. And now you're gonna put in two rows of gathering stitches in the quarter inch seam allowance here, end to end, along the raw edge. I finally started watching the new season of The Crown yesterday and I can't stop thinking about it and it's all I want to do. You know that feeling when you like a show? I love it when I like a show. It's not very often. This felt a little tight even though I just lengthened it. It felt a little tight that time, especially when I started. All right, so you're gonna pull your gathering stitches. I like two rows because it makes the gather so nice and tidy. Hi, PJ, how's it going? Oh, nice, mom and pop quilting, cute. That's great. Are you a quilter? I just got my first real quilt back yesterday. I showed the stream yesterday, I'm pretty excited. And I'm meeting, you know, I'm finally meeting some sewing peeps in my area. I'm just having to quilt to, to meet them. <laughs> Okay, so uh, I'm gonna pull from this side now. This side I think will be a little easier. Okay, so you can kind of get a gauge of how long you want this. You want it to go in between these two edges here, just shy of the seam the raw edge. So I'll explain that better in just a second. So just make sure you get a, that gathered up and decide do I want my ruffle like that way, color wise, or this way. I think I'm gonna go with the more blue facing the blueberry. Pull your threads towards the raw edge. And your remember these notches here on the back here and um I'm gonna lighten it up a little bit. Is that okay with you guys if I lighten it up? Megan's not here to tell me no. <laughs> Maybe she is. She's lurking and she's like, no. Okay, I need to move these out of the way so I can see it. Is that all right? I'm so anything to among many other crafts. Oh, okay. Oh, you're not liking the, oh, okay, okay. Yeah, I love that series. I I was like, oh, I'm not watching that. There's no way. I, I just told myself, I love, that was my gateway to fantasy was the His Dark Material series. It's so amazing. I did end up watching it because I had a few friends that were big fans of that series say it was pretty good. And my husband, and I really liked it. We're watching it together. All right, so, um, Remember you have your notches here. That is just for turning your pie slice right side out and hand sewing it shut. I didn't give you notches on the cupcake for that because it's pretty, It's it can be a little confusing adding more notches to that curve, right? So this one, I just want that reminder because I, occasionally I just close it up. So this little ruffle though is gonna go right up to the seam line parallel to this edge. So put it about a fat quarter of an inch away from that edge or quarter inch away. And you are gonna sew it along the entire edge here. You don't need to worry about those notches quite yet. Right sides together, or if you've picked a side you like better. Let me shorten my stitch length. Make sure I got enough gathers in here. Just 
sew to the left of your gathering stitch so that it's completely enclosed into the seam allowance. So my gathering stitches are right here. My pie is pointing that way. And you want your needle to the left of the gathering stitches so that you don't have to worry about them showing on the right side of your pin cushion. Otherwise, you're gonna have to remove them later. All right, so we have, and you can double check, just look. Oh, are any of my gathering stitches showing? And they're showing right there. So I'm just gonna fix it right now. I can either remove the gathering stitches, which takes a little bit of time, but it is kind of nice, or you can just make sure they're in there, right? Hey, Sherry, how's it going? <laughs> yep, exactly. Okay, so there's our top. And now you're gonna take your bottom, and you're gonna put it right sides together. Um, I'm gonna put the notches facing me so I can see them. But actually, I'm gonna sew from here so I can see this seam right here that we just sewed and make sure I sew to the, to the left of it. So let's see, where is my notch? Let me make sure I can see where my notch is on this side. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna go from the end to the notch and then I'm gonna do the same thing, end to the notch. I like going from the ends to toward the notch. It's a little easier. You don't have to get it spot on to that notch. You just need that little opening. Like I said, I like doing it from the end toward the notch. But I like being able to see that seam line too, so I make sure I got all the stitching in the seam. See, so now I have my opening right there and the beginning of my pie. All right, so now this is the tricky part. Oh, and I didn't put, oh, this is for the, the pie, the pizza pie. All right, so this is the tricky part in a way. So just take your time and it'll all be fine. So, um, oh wait, we need to put these two together first. So put your ends together here, right across these short ends, quarter inch seam allowance. This whole pie slice is quarter inch seam allowance. All right. What, I have these like random threads hanging out. Let's get rid of those guys. All right, so you have your weird little edge. Now, this is the filling and there's a notch in the center of these two long edges. Now make sure you've notched that into the filling quarter of an inch, all right? Now the other thing that's going to help you, and if I'm saying this is going to help you, it's gonna help you. <laughs> because I think um, I am definitely notorious for doing shortcuts. And it's just sometimes nice to ensure success. Like even if it takes you an extra step right now, um, it's worth it. So what I like to do is I actually draw in the seam allowance just right here for this point. And I do it with chalk. I have this little choco liner like that. Because it's very easy to misjudge where this point lands in relation to the cut edge and the seam line. It's way down here. Like if you were to measure from this point to this point here, you know, this point here to this point here, it's way more than a quarter of an inch. Your seam allowance is always parallel to the cut edge. It doesn't matter things like this, these junctures. <laughs> yeah, they could, Jerry, if you have a sewist in your life. All right, so I'm gonna do it on both. It's the same thing. Just make sure you get the juncture. You really just need to focus on this down here. Okay. My little basket it magnetizes fell off yesterday. That's why I was having trouble finding. Okay, so now here's your filling. And um, my filling does have like a right side up direction. So this is the bottom of my pie. 
This is the way to look at it. This is the, the right side out. So this is the way we're gonna see it like this. Okay, this is your pie, right? So this is my bottom edge. And what I like to do is I like to start, so this is the bottom of my filling and this is the back. I start along this little flat part, right? So this is the piece that has this extra for the back of the pie right here. Okay, so I line this up right there and I line it up so that it is this edge right here goes a quarter of an inch past the little seam right there. I'm over explaining this because it's not bad once you line it all up and you start correctly. It'll be pretty easy. Okay, so here we go. See, that's how it looks. Hey, Nancy. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> yeah, gentle cyber push, exactly. All right, so here is one key thing. Pick this up and go like this. Okay, just get it over there. All right, um, I could try and explain to you why this happens, but it just comes from years of experience knowing that if I hadn't started by doing that, I would have had to pick my needle up and start again somewhere along the line. I wouldn't have been able to continue around in the entire perimeter of this filling. All right, so now I've started at that seam back there and I start started about right here Okay, so my needle started right here. I didn't sew across this, so I've started right there. Okay, there's my seam right there, and I'm just lining it up. So there's the seam. I'm over explaining. <laughs> okay, so is my thing still flipped? It's still flipped, all right, great. We'll know in a second if it isn't. All right, so I'm going to sew along this end, and then I'm going to pivot at this corner along the pie edge. Okay, I'm going to go down. Quarter inch away from my bottom of my filling right there, now I'm going to pivot. Keep this flat and just pivot your filling. I have to kind of tuck my edge there, and I, I have to, like, pull out this little filling ed edge there. Pull this out here. I'm gonna overdo it. See, so now it's nice and flat and I keep going. Now don't pull on anything. Now I'm getting down here to that spot that I drew on and this little notch right here, this is what I like to do. I actually like to sink my awl in there or a pin and I take that little spot and I sink it into the point of that drawing right there. And I know those two spots need to line up <laughs> so um, this fabric, this fabric's been kicking around in fabric stores for years. It's not hard to find Sherry. There's a lot of the realistic printing fruits, and this is my favorite one. So, <laughs> okay, so yeah, so this is my trick. I take that little center point. I've already clipped into it. You, if you haven't, it's okay. You can clip into it in a second because we're about to clip into the whole thing. But just line up that pivot point right with that pivot point down there that you drew, the point of that triangle. Now put your needle there. Now turn, and now you're gonna take your scissors and you're gonna cut in the wool felt, this wool felt right here, down to that point that we drew, straight down. Don't do it on that one, do it on the one you're sewing right now. Just get pretty close, okay, and now you're going to pivot again. Oh shoot, I just undid my thread. Wait, let me get back and track. My, my machine clips the thread. Okay, so now I, because I pressed with my heel. All right, so now I pivot there again. Just make sure you're not getting any tucks underneath. And keep going. I'm not pulling at all. So now your next goal is this point right here. And it's roughly at this little corner of this this piece of pie slice edging, right? This is that back piece with the extra edge. So it's about right there. If you're not pulling anything, it should all line up and you cut it out okay. All right, so now I, I like to open up this seam allowance when I go over it, these little short ends, just to reduce the bulk. 
And then now we're going to pivot this filling again. Keep going. Don't stop. Uh, but you should be... Okay, I'm going to back up a little bit. I'm going to get that to match a little bit better because it should match really good. You really want this end to be fully on the back part of this pie edging. And that seam juncture to line up just like it did where we started on the other side. So here we go. Let me get that a little bit back on track. So right here, like that. So we're going to get up to the top there. I'm having trouble getting mine to match. I never have trouble getting this to match. <laughs> I'm going to pivot there. I'm going to do a shallow pivot just right there. And we can continue on. We're continuing on. See, by now you probably would have had to lift up your needle if we didn't pick that up and move it over. Yeah, I, I only clipped into the felt because I had already clipped into the blueberry. Now I'm about to do it again, Louise, so I'll show you. So this is, see, I already clipped into the blueberry just to eat, make it easy. And um, then when I get down here, once I have my needle of my machine sunk into that point right there, if you can see the chalk, that's when I will take the opportunity to clip. So this is when I like to find that little point right there, stick it in to the wool felt like that. Because this is non-negotiable. I can see my thing's a little misaligned there. It'll be okay. All right, so I get up to that point, get my needle in there. I just kind of move it around so I can see it so I don't clip anything else. And then I clip into the wool felt down to the needle. You don't have to get, like, don't, don't be, like, perfectionist about that. Because we're going to have an uh, opportunity to clip into it a little bit more when I'm done sewing the entire thing, if it needs it. We just need it to release the tension so we can pivot right there at this point. And so now you're approaching your start point, which is right here. Get rid of this little thread there, that little start point. So you just need all this to line up now. So I like to kind of pull this aside like this. If you really want to over like think about it, you can you can sit here and line it all up just like that. And now your filling is sewn to the pie. So then look at your points there. And if you like, you can kind of clip into it a little bit. But it looks pretty good. Now, look, I know it looks kind of funny. It's kind of like a weird creature at this point. But now we're going to do the last seam. And then we top stitch it and we're done. So we're almost there. All right, so now you're going to put this right sides together, which looks like, what the heck is the right sides, right? So just relax and don't think too hard on this. But think about where where it is on the pie. So you have this one piece right with the continuous back. So it goes like, so let's look at it as if the pie was sitting here. That's the pie sitting there. And this is the pie. I accidentally sewed it in upside down once and it worked perfectly fine. I can't even find the pie I did that on. Exactly, it's a ta-da. So this is how it would be, right? Right, so here's your pie coming together. So they just flip this over and put it right sides together. Okay, you can start wherever you like. Start a nice flat spot, but line everything up. Now remember, you got to go past your ruffle, so don't catch your ruffle. And if you want, you can pin it out of the way like this. So line up your seam back here, and then just kind of start in the middle. Pull your filling out of the way, make sure. You're just gonna go around the perimeter and see, look, your points are all gonna line up just like this. It's actually really easy. You can go around, same thing, quarter inch seam allowance and just push all this inside the pie and keep this little edge lined up to the other edge. 
I'm gonna keep your ruffle out of the way. I like to open up this seam back here to reduce the bulk. Keep the ruffle out of the way. I um, really changed the way I sewed these from originally because um, because I, I really actually didn't even come up with this way to do it and I like this way better, but also I really like the ruffle going all the way up to the edge. It's just tricky at the very end when we do the top stitching. It's not hard. It's just, you know, something to think about. All right, so see, look, I'm matching that point up again. So I'm just matching all these edges up. They want to go together. They don't look like they want to go together, but they really do. Just kind of ease it in there if it's acting weird. But once you get to these points, everything should be on track. You don't want your pie to be wonky. I mean, that's the piece I always pull out of the pan and eat. <laughs> I'm always like, I'm doing everyone a favor. I take the broken one, right? Okay, so look, it is still looking weird, right? But this is going right sides together. You're going all the way around the perimeter because remember our hole is right here. We don't have to worry about any of this edge. So here's the seam back here. I like opening it up. You could put, push the seam allowance one direction on one and one direction on the other piece when they get to each other. This I have found is a little less bulky and a little easier to deal with. All right, so I'm just kind of keeping, I don't even need to worry about everything matching up. It's going to. So just keep these edges all together. I'm getting close to that start point to get our seam kind of close together. Dang it, stop it. There we go. Couldn't grab it. You can tell this isn't a true wool felt because it's uh, the edges are already starting to fray a little bit. It's just a wool fabric. All right, so I'm here at my beginning. And now I have my pie. Okay, so now here's your points right here. So remember, when this is turned right side out, all this fabric right here has to get shoved into that little point. So you need to get rid of it. So what I like to do is I like to shave it along the seam there and right here, just for a little bit, like an inch of it. No matter how careful I am, it's still going to have a little bit of um, softness on the point. That's the only thing I really trim. And now we're going to turn it right side out and see how I did. You can use a chopstick when you get down to those points. Um, it's really helpful. I use an awl and a chopstick. Because at first you're like, oh no, it doesn't look anything like the pie. <laughs> But then I use the, the uh, chopstick and I kind of press it in there. <gasps> oh, shoot. See, that's why it's not, you can tell it's not wool felt. It'll do that. So I'm going to use my awl. This is a little more open weave than a wool felt. I'm cheating because I really love the color. And my original blueberry pie pin cushion that I made got stolen. <laughs> Can you believe that? <laughs> it was like my actual pin cushion that I use every day and uh, someone stole it at an open house event. <laughs> and I, I, get, I would get asked to make the blueberry one a lot, but I started running out of some of the um, fabrics that I used for it. I'm going to trim these. Probably not the best idea, but Hopefully you're using a wool felt like I tell you to. And if you looked at my original Etsy site, my uh, user profile is a picture of that blueberry pie slice. Okay, so here we go. It's not quite ready yet, right? So now I want you to go around this little edge and tell it what you're gonna be doing with it, right? So just kind of roll it along this edge here. So we're about to top stitch it right, stitch in the ditch of this line, the filling, and then we're done. But I like to kind of prep it 
kind of pull, slide it apart and kind of spread that seam. Just kind of massage it into place so it gets the idea. And we spent all that time trying to get that point right there and it'll still look kind of soft when we're done sewing. <laughs> That's why you gotta do all that to it because if you don't do anything there, prepping that point, it'll look really soft and not sharp at all. <laughs> yeah, it was kind of a weird thing, Leslie. I, that's It feels so bad, you know? And that one just felt really personal because it was an open studio event. So basically people were at my house. <laughs> so it's like, it's kind of weird. Okay. So now we're gonna do this um, top stitching thing. And so what I do is I do the top from ruffle to ruffle, and I do the bottom from ruffle to ruffle. And you start from always on this edge side, and you're gonna stitch in the ditch of the filling and the edge here. So sit here and push this in here. Get that seam lining up against that seam right there, okay? You don't have to get all the way up to the ruffle, you guys. Like, I don't on all of these, and it does not bug me, and it doesn't look weird. So just get as close as you can. If you're doing a color that is very visible, what you're gonna be doing, just be consistent and do your best. It's not going to change your pie slice, barely anything if you can't get very close to that ruffle, all right? And I can't, like, I mean, I, I definitely, like in a home machine, I wouldn't be able to probably, well, I could, but um, I feel like it would change the tension a little too much. So I'm just gonna get up as close as I can and I'm going to stitch in the ditch. Now I do it from this side because you um, don't want to do it from the other side. You would sew onto the filling by accident. So just make sure your bobbin thread is the color that you want to show on the top of your pie up here. Okay, so then just go around and stitch. This isn't too hard, but I am holding this edge nice and firm. My edging does definitely get a little bit different width. Now, this is something to think, like remember how hard we worked on getting that point a point when we pivoted right there? Now, when we're going back to stitch it, it's like, where did that point go? It's kind of soft right there. So remember, your stitching is gonna show on the top of the pie. So even if it's not a really sharp point right there, make it a sharp point. No one's gonna look and go, hmm, that wasn't very sharp, was it? You know what I mean? So just make it a sharp point now, because then it'll look like it on the top. No one will ever know. Now make sure you don't catch the rest of your pie. Just pull it out of the way there. Okay, we're getting up to the ruffle again. I pull the ruffle out of the way. And I get as close as I can. All right, so that's what I did. I stitched here. And my stitch right there goes to right there. I pivoted there not there. And so now I have my top edge. Now we're going to do the bottom edge. So remember, start on the filling side. And I like to, like I said, I like to massage this little edge right here into place. Get the Loki pug hair out of there. Pull the ruffle out of the way. I think I'm getting it. Maybe it's a sheep fiber. All right. I got a little bit on my filling just now, but I don't think it's going to be a very visible spot. So just try and keep your edge on the edge, this little seam right here on the edge. This is really what makes your pie look like a pie. It would have been a lot easier to make this without putting crust but it was the crust that really made it special. Same thing, pivot at a point. Don't pivot where your blueberries are or your filling. It's getting this whole thing out of the way. Pivot at that little corner down there. Pull my ruffle out of the way. Get as close to it as possible without catching it. 
a back stitch and then I'm done. Let's get rid of some of these threads. I like to get rid of my threads before I inspect. It's kind of like a, a treat. Okay. There's two. All right, so there we go. Ready to stuff. And there's your pie. Now, if you had wanted to use the stiffener, I would definitely put it in um, when you sew your um, this whole top piece. Put put it just treat it as one layer. I do, Sherry. Yeah, <laughs> I I haven't been knitting lately. Like the last year, I've knit a little tiny bit. This is all the scraps of my yarn. <laughs> It's pretty funny. In fact, um, my gauge changed so much I had to add insets on the sides. Kind of weird. It's my scrappy sweater. My friend and I always wanted to have play sweaters. Like, like um, we saw this idea where you make a vest for your kid out of all your scrap yarn. And it's like a play sweater. Like they can play out in the yard. They can get it dirty. You're not so worried about it, cause even though it's a hand knit and you use up your scraps. And then we were like, we made them and we were like, dang, these are really cute. We want them too. <laughs> and so um, she ended up making herself one. Mine didn't work out. I ended up using a pattern and it worked, but it wasn't, it didn't feel that. It didn't feel like the scrappiness. So I revisited it making a scrappy sweater one day. And it was fun. Like I just th totally threw together whatever. You know, like I, it, it was actually getting hard. I like coming up with something new. All right, well, so how do you guys feel? All right, so we have a little cupcake. We have a pie. Just like, I just need those, <laughs> needed more. So you're gonna stuff it, and then you'll just whip stitch it shut right here. It really doesn't show. Oh gosh, it's so dark. I don't have a lighter one. But yeah, you'll just whip stitch that shut. Make sure you cover up your stitching on your ruffle and you don't pinch it like this. You know, you wanna just keep your back going to this seam allowance right here. You don't want your stitches to show on the front. And same thing here, you'll just tuck this in. It's a lot easier than it seems. It's a little fiddly at first. It feels kind of weird. But remember, it's a pin cushion. Once you've stuffed it, you can actually stick some pins in there you know, just like this and keep it in line while you stitch it shut. It's actually really quick and easy. With the wool felt, it's so easy to do. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so I think I'm gonna make another, I'm just gonna hang out. If you have any questions, let me know. I keep cutting things out and not getting to them on the stream. So I kind of want to, um, make sure I finish some of these things so that I don't have uh, more things sitting here to sew, you know? So I think maybe I'll sew one more of the cupcake. I'm kind of curious about it. All right, so we'll sew this. Maybe I'll try the, the way Louise was saying, do it from the bottom up. I used to always do it that way. Oh, I need to change my thread color. Hmm, maybe I'll do red. Red. Red or green. What can I use where, I'm gonna have to stitch on the black canvas at some point, so I'm kind of curious, like, I don't wanna switch twice. <laughs> I have green or red. I think I'll do the green. It's not quite a Kelly green, but it's pretty close. Maybe I'll do red. I don't have a green bobbin. Yeah, I'm not big on seasonal things, but um, I really had fun making that Santa oven mitt yesterday. I think you turned out really cute. I made three shirts yesterday afternoon, and um, 
They turned out great out of all those holiday fabrics that I got, those knits. I brought them home, otherwise I'd show you guys. Yay, Terry. Oh man. A working toilet is very important. Everything comes to a halt if it's not. Thanks, Louise. And I'm glad I remembered to add the heart just because I kept forgetting to do it on some of the others. Oh, it looks like I haven't used this bobbin for a bit. It's a little thready. I don't want to add that lint to my bobbin case. I know, it's such a busy time of year. Like, just having the time to watch a gift sewing stream when you really could be making your gifts is a lot to ask of folks. All right, so we'll do this from the bottom up. I think I got good enough at sewing the, I feel like I used to uh, machine sew the pom-poms on these. It totally sounds like a ceramy thing to do, doesn't it? They were, well, my mom, I told my mom, I was like, you know, my mom always, she's pretty festive and she, I just remember her always liking to wear something seasonal and because she lost all that in the fire, I was like, hey, you know, I'll make you some holiday shirts if you want. So she picked out a couple of fabrics and then I um, copied one of her shirts and made a couple for her and then I used, I actually liked the shirt she had me copy, so I made one for me in that pattern. Then I just made like a linden, I used the linden sweatshirt, but I used regular jersey knit, not sweatshirt knit. And I made myself a shirt using that pattern um, with that, that snowflake with the scissors print. I don't know if you saw that, Louise. Um, but yeah, they turned out really great. The one I made using the like green gingerbread and the, the the green background gingerbread is a little crazy. Right, Nancy? Yeah, you and I are both on that. <laughs> this one, look, this one actually works. See, all my little tips are coming through to the top. This top's gonna look way nicer than that other one did. Yeah. <laughs> Why couldn't have that happen on my first one? All right, and then uh, I was thinking I could, you know, mimic the little pom pom on his hat, and because I only have Christmas pom poms for some weird reason, I have no idea where these came from. Right, Eliza? I know this time of year, man. It's hard to fit anything in. Okay, what do you guys think? He's gonna have a green ruffle. And he's going to have black boots. Red or green? Red or... I think red. Yeah, exactly, Rachel. I do need to sew in to warm up. I think I like the red. You like the green, Nancy? Green? Red, <laughs> green, come on. <laughs> green, okay, three for green, one for red. Me and Louise are outnumbered. <laughs> Silver doesn't work because of the cream. I mean, I don't have to do the tacky metal one. <laughs> Late night's like, well, I'm throw it white. Nancy, stop it. <laughs> All right, I'll do the green. I have no idea where this came from. Probably someone gave it to me. Um, is there green thread anywhere? Come on. Let me use this. I used to have 4H green. You guys staying white? It's, this is very, very antique cream compared to the white black. Oh, Nancy. 
Nancy is my troll. <laughs> oh, you know what? There's green on this. I'll use that. It's green enough. It's green enough. All right, so let's see. I love how big this needle is, you know? I was like down, I probably had my pack of hand sewing needles for 15 or 20 years and I was down to all the really microscopic little ones. And I actually try, tried to buy hand sewing needles a couple times and no one had them where I would look, look, you know? Gosh dang it, what is going on here? I'm just trying to put a few stitches so I can start but I'm not getting them all. This is when, like when you don't start with the first and you're just using used thread, it's the worst, you know? Well, fun, Nancy. That'll be great. Yeah, you don't need much, you know? I look at things now and I'm like, ooh, could I buy that whatever it is, like some product that's already sewn um, and uh, take it apart and use it for a pin cushion. Sometimes it's cheaper. Yeah, that'll make it worth the trip exactly, Terry. My little um, side threading needle keeps unthreading because I don't have enough of a tail. I think I got this a little cockeyed. It's a little cockeyed, but hey, Santa likes his eggnog, right? All right. Worst hand sewing ever. All right, let me do my uh, ruffle, my least favorite part. I've never shopped at a, a Walmart. Um, do they have a good fabric selection? Yeah, I mean, I feel like inexpensive fabrics, you don't need the, the like highest quality garment fabrics, right, for something like this. In fact, a, th a few of mine came from a friend's stash. She was like, oh, please let me give you scraps for this because, you know, she, it's like she's a quilter, so she has lots of nice little, like, assortment of things. And it was a way for her to let go of some things, and I didn't need much, right? So she wasn't let going, letting go of all of it. And she had things right up my alley. That's where I got the cow pie stuff. Oh, I need to make my stitch point much longer. I'm going to try and cheat and do one row and let's just see how. I'm going to do one row all the way across and I break all the rules. I'm sure I'm going to hate it. All right, I forgot to put my notch in, so let's do that right now. This <laughs> red is so discordant with the green, it's kind of jiggling on in front of my eyes. You know how it like does that? Ah, oh, okay, cool. Sandy is right in the single malt. <laughs> it was so funny the other night, my husband is a whiskey drinker, that's what he likes. And um, I don't drink hardly anything at, like I, I really, I, I like it, but I just don't. I just, I don't know. And, um, he was, I think, preparing his drink that he was going to drink. And so it was sitting on the counter, you know, like all caramel colored and everything on ice. And I just told him, like, dang, I'm really overwhelmed. I have so much going on. Because I have my pattern, I, I think I got the final proof today. 
<laughs> um, and, you know, like that and like getting ready for all the streams this week and um, just the general craziness of the holiday season. I don't really have a weekend this weekend because tonight, tonight I go to a holiday party. Tomorrow I'm going to a home tour. Monday would normally be my day off, but I was going to come in and do personal projects. So I was just feeling like, oh my gosh, plus there's all the stuff at home that's not getting done. I was feeling a little overwhelmed and kind of like, oh my gosh. And so I, he went out to do something with the dogs outside. And so I took a little drink of his drink and he had walked in by then. So he, and, it, and, uh, and it was really good. I was like, oh, that was actually really good. And he kind of chuckled. He goes, did you just take a drink of my drink? I said, yeah, why? I said, it was really good. He said, there, there's no alcohol in it. <laughs> I was like, what? It tastes like it. It was all the bitters and everything but the whiskey. And I literally was like, oh, I already feel it. That's exactly what I need. My neck was really tight. And I was like, I just want something to warm up my neck and relax it a little bit. And so I was like, oh, I'll just take a little drink of this and it'll help, you know? And it, and I, I psychologically, I was like, that's exactly what I need. I just need a sip of that. And it's already starting to like make my neck relax. And then he's like, there's no alcohol in that. It's just the bitters. I'm like, there's definitely alcohol in that. I can feel, I can taste it and feel it. He was like, well, maybe. And so we looked at it. I mean, literally, guys, there's like this much drink, including the, there was a bunch of ice and just a little bit of the drink in his cup. So it wasn't much liquid. And, he, you know, I thought he'd, it was just like partially gone, like he'd been drinking it, you know. And um, I was like, the liqueur is they they have alcohol. So it was like a 16%. Like one of them was 16%, like maybe on par with a glass of wine. If you drank a whole cup of it, you know, it'd be like a glass of wine, right? Placebo to the rescue. <laughs> I know, Nancy, right? So he made me one of those last night. I was like, will you make me one of those? And he did. Um, and at first I was like, you can put the whiskey in it. That's fine. But then he didn't have the right kind. It was very peaty. It was a scotch. It just didn't go with that. And so he was like, no, 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 it's here. I'll, I'll make you one without. And so he did, he made me one without it. And it was really good. I, I like, cause I like things like that, like, like gin style things where it's like the herbs, you can taste the herbs and stuff. Yeah. I'm all about that placebo effect. <laughs> all right. So let's see here. Put my ruffle on. I'm doing the quick and dirty. Let's see here. The red stitches are, there's something. All right, where is that halfway point though? Now it's really hard to see because I don't have my um, stitches to guide me. Goes right here. Pretty sure goes right here. So that's, that's where I need to get. This is when I don't spend all the time prepping it and explaining it. <laughs> it takes a little longer because I'm, I didn't do all my nice little tricks. Oh, and the gathers are all messy because I didn't do two rows. This fabric's pretty easy to gather at least though. I actually got out of bed at like 7.30 this morning just to try on an outfit I was thinking I could wear to this holiday party. This is the first time I'm not like, okay, what should I wear? Should I go buy something? I literally don't even know what I'm going to wear. I'm like, you know what? I don't care anymore. Maybe I'll wear that obnoxious Christmas shirt I made yesterday. Someone's going to show up in an ugly Christmas sweater even though everyone else is dressed fancy, right? I could be that person. And then I always like have like have a glass of wine to be polite because you know I feel like people think I'm judging them if I don't drink but I just honestly just don't like feeling that way before bed. <laughs> right Nancy exactly. So um I told myself, yeah, you're not going to have anything to drink. You're going to wear whatever you want. I did not put enough gathers in this ruffle here. So I'm kind of easing them in there as I go.
I need to just add some more. Oh, I don't think I can. I stitched through it. I feel like I was really excited about doing these pie slice and pin cushions today, you know, and I feel like I didn't give the greatest tutorial, you guys. So I really, I'm sorry about that. I'm really glad you have the video. <laughs> it's been the fifth day of streaming in a row, which has been awesome. I am definitely starting to show signs of it, though. You know, I'm getting punchy. I think I just put, maybe I just didn't get my center notch in the right spot and I have more gathers on that side. Okay. Let's get rid of some of these threads here. Make it a little less kooky to deal with. All right, put our ends together. All right, so we have a bit of an informal poll yesterday. Right, Kathleen? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Rachel. <laughs> Sorry I reminded you. I don't know. <laughs> um, we had an informal poll yesterday about next week because we were going to talk about fitting our basic blocks and things that we did. Um, then you've had a few weeks to kind of catch up and try one yourself. But it does feel like everyone's a little overwhelmed with everything going on this time of year. So if you guys want, you guys want to wait until after the holidays, I'm totally fine with that. I, am, I feel you. And I, I, there's no rush for it. Like it's just for our own use. So why not make it so that it is as usable as possible I don't want people feeling like, no, no, just continue on without me. I'll catch up because I feel like there's a lot of folks that feel that way. And I really want you, if you really want to have this block and the, the sleeve draft, I feel like we should make sure it's a time that works for everybody, you know? All right, so I'm just attaching my top now to the base. You vote wait, yes please. Okay. Hey Karen. Yeah, I'm I'm actually kind of feeling that way too. So I'm I'm fine with that, you guys. I I had a question from someone on Patreon on it about um like is the lot good for um curvy and plus sizes? And I, I do think if you take very accurate measurements and you use some common sense, like when you're doing it and you're looking at it, you're like Hmm, I think I'm a little bit different right there. You can use it and adjust it. It should be good for everybody. It is not based on a size chart. It's based on you. Wait, is your vote too great? Okay, cool. We'll wait. I don't feel like I've seen a single person say, I cannot wait for next week. I'm so ready. I have my block ready. <laughs> no one has said that yet. So I don't feel like we're missing someone. I think I just went a little too far right there. Oh no, I was fine. Sorry, it's probably really dark for you guys to see the black, isn't it? All right, so now we have our festive cupcake. Oh, the canvas is a little stiffer. Dina, I was just thinking about you. Yeah, vote for wait. All right. The votes are in. So um, I'll come up with something to do with you guys next week. I saw someone's having a sewing, a gift sewing bag um, along it just started pouring rain here. What is this? What is this little mess here? And who sewed that? Was that where I start and stopped? You can kind of see my red stitches. I think I might clean that up. Let's see what's going on right there. It looks okay on the inside though. 
I think it was just where I start stopped right there. All right. I don't know when I'll use a Santa cupcake, but hey. I, you know, I kind of want to take this pattern and scale it up really big and make a big cupcake pincushion <laughs> that's weighted, you know, like weighs, like it sits. Okay, Terry, cool. Yeah, we'll wait, you guys. All right. What time is it? I can't see the clock today. Oh, 1.30. Do you guys want to do one more pie slice? Yeah, so someone's having a gift bag so long. It's through the loops if you guys are in the knitting world. Um, and I, I actually, I actually bought gift bags printed on Spoonflower and I never sewed them. I've had them for two years. They're super cute too. Like they're kind of kitschy and cute. Look at these. So it's a pant, like you, it's just printed straight across the fabric. And see you cut it and sew it and you have a little bag. Isn't this cute? And I even did like two wide, you know, so that it would be bigger. So... And I, I don't know what I was thinking, but I, I had it printed. Oh, she does, Sherry, that's awesome. I think it's so cool. I love Spoonflower. I could be an ambassador for them. I have been talking them up since they came out. Nice, Rachel, you finished yours, that's awesome. See, you're way ahead of me. Yeah, so maybe, um, so here's what I'm thinking. I have an Archer button up to sew. What was that men's button down t-shirt I made? I have one of those to sew. And I, this is also one of the ambitious things I'm thinking of sewing for me is I'm gonna try and make a reversible archer button up that's flannel lined. Okay, cool brown sugar. Yay. I really want you guys to participate. If that it means the difference of participation, let's do it. Cause it's all for us, right? You have a house of nosy people, right? I know, I was just thinking today, like, this is when you're supposed to start wrapping presents so you don't have to do it all at once. This is what the smart people do. You know? All right, I'm gonna make this weird piece of pizza pie. Okay, so we have our pizza. This is making me hungry and I don't even eat pepperoni pizza. Filling, no blueberries allowed. Oof, this seems like, I don't think I could actually turn this right side out with stiffener. I think interfacing would be a, a better choice. And um, I actually have a piece of interfacing. Let me uh, set up my iron. I gotta turn it on, grab my Yeah, I have a few different spots. It just depends on the person, you know? I really love how I can um, iron this on my uh i could actually iron this directly to my wool felt and it would be it would be fine you know because the wool felt it just doesn't stick like it would my cotton ironing board cover okay 
right, we'll do a layer of interfacing. This is the canvas from Spoon Flower. Wait. Oh, and I just turned, I turned off my iron. Okay. Oh, that's right. I remember getting home going, oh, I didn't turn my iron off. <laughs> Who was it that was saying their husband has the sweet tooth and he knows that your sweets are in your nightstand? Dang, sweets in my nightstand. That would be so dangerous for me. But I have this like, um, where I sit, this literally looks like pizza, doesn't it? <laughs> Um, where I sit and watch TV upstairs, it's two chairs next to each other with a little console next there to attach. It's, it's, it's like a Swedish company. It's a really neat um, design. There's a, two cup holders, but that little spot that's in between the two chairs, because like here's the two chairs, right? And then right here, there's a upholstered cushiony spot right here that you can lean on. Two cup holders and then a little like tongue that you could set things on. Usually there's a pet sitting here, but it just lifts up and you could store stuff in there and um, you could um, put bags of potato chips, all kinds of stuff. I have never put anything in there because I feel like it's super dangerous like to do that, you know, between ants or just starting to like stockpile food and eating way too much. I do put napkins in there, but they're like, it's like a, it's really deep. <laughs> Tina, that's funny. You need to figure out what um, Nancy does. She does the text to speak thing when she's driving and talking with us. Okay, here we go. But it would also be a good place to hide things because um, I'm the only one that sits there and everyone else forgets that's there. Like, I forget it's there, so they don't even know probably. Everyone meaning I have two other people in the house. It's not like it's a lot of people. This must be the weirdest picture to iron pizza. <laughs> this is, if in, someone's on Twitch, I'd really like them to clip this, that I'm ironing pizza. <laughs> okay. I had a house with a wood bin um, in my studio because my studio was wood heat. That was a good place to hide things. I never did though. All right, so here's my ruffle and I need to decide what to do with the thickness. And I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hem it. So let's hem it first. I have this red thread on so it's perfect opportunity. I'm gonna narrow hem it. I don't think it'll be too bad. It'll be good to know if this is a good idea because mostly you look at your pie slice, you know, from the front. And what I find when you sew things is once you do it, it seems like it's supposed to be that way. So once it's sewn that way, it seems it seems natural. Oh, that red's much darker, huh? Okay, I'm gonna cut off a little bit. Let's get rid of this thread vomit here. I need to finish my edges too, shoot. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, this isn't the best idea, I admit. It's all for the fabric. Let me put that little edge in there. You know, I, I really like my iron. I was just talking the other day about it because um, there's so many really amazing 
iron brands out there and a lot of people being sponsored by them. So I'm seeing a lot of different irons right now, like that Oliso Home and then there's another one. And I don't know much about those. I've never heard those brands before or used them, but people really love them. So my iron, um, this is the, this is actually the fourth or fifth exact same iron I've bought. And that's, I sounds like a lot, but it's because I usually have one at home and one here because I need to iron my clothes at home. So um, I used this one here at work and it got dropped a few times by me. <laughs> I, I'm the worst. And so I think it had gotten cracked. So the steam was starting to leak out in a spot that kind of hurt my fingers. So I was just like, you know what, I'm done. It was still hold, still great. I can still probably even pass it to someone as long as I tell them, hey, you know, this is what happened to it, but it still works. So I, when I went and looked at irons, I was like, you know what, I'm just gonna buy what I've always used. You know, I kind of like this. It looks like a napkin now that I hemmed it that way. <laughs> it looks like a napkin. So when I went to go and buy it, I started having qualms. I was like, gosh dang it, there's all these really nice irons out there. Maybe I should try and do something new because I'm sure a lot of people want to know what they're like or maybe I should try for a sponsorship, you know? And I was standing there in Target because that's where you can get that iron. Um, I looked other places and no one had them. I knew it was that iron at Target. And so I was like, oh wait, I want two rows. And so I stood there in the aisle then and I looked up reviews of it. And one thing I figured out that made me feel better is that this iron is geared towards people who need steam like garment sewists. So if you are a garment sewist and you need steam and, and I really like a heavy iron with a point, um, I feel like it's a really great option. It's $80. It works like a champ. It gets hot really fast. The auto shut off it still happens, which I'm not a huge fan of, but at the same time, it gets hot really fast. I've never had an issue with one, except for the fact that I've dropped them. So, it has a pretty decent steam reservoir. I, I could always use more, you know? Yeah, exactly, Rachel. So, and that's what I've seen as well. I see the, the quilters really love the Aliso, so maybe, there's something about it that really speaks to the use for a quilter. So that's something to think about. So I actually felt better. I felt like, you know, am I just like resting on what I know and I'm not trying something new? Cause I don't mind. I just didn't, I didn't really have a whole lot of time. I went to Best Buy even. I was like, maybe they have, I mean, they have vacuums. Maybe they have irons, no irons. Oh, they did. They did have irons, but they were a brand I'd never used before. I think it was a shark iron. They had one brand. So I was like, no Rowenta? Like Rowenta for me just says iron, <laughs> you know? So I was kind of surprised and I didn't want to take a chance on something I'd never heard of. So, so yeah, I really like it. I've had four or five of this exact same iron. It's been around forever. It gets great reviews. It's also pretty accessible. Like if you wanted to ask for one from someone, they can get it really easily, right? All right, so I'm gonna add a few more gathers down at the other end. I can feel these gathers trying to slide off the end over there. These little short ones, you gotta be careful. I think that little, the Aliso that's really tiny is so intriguing to me, but I don't travel and sew, you know? So I had to tell myself like, you don't even do that. When you go and hang out with these sewists that are that are quilters, they have like four or five irons going. They, they In fact, they trip the circuit breakers because so many people have irons going. So I don't really need a travel iron, you know? There's always one communal one. And then other people might set one up right near themselves. So first world issues, right? <laughs> so, you know, it's all relative. This canvas, man, it's because it's such a small little piece and it's stiff, it's like fighting me. So yeah, right, Rachel? I don't have the, um, the, 
scorching issue? Because do people leave their iron down? <laughs> um, but I have, I saw one gal said hers stopped working, that auto lift thing. And I've never used it, so I don't know. But my friend had a, like a really nice iron, the kind that uh, the air suction comes down. Is that the, gra was that with gravity feed? Which one of you has the gravity feed? And that's just because it has a big steam reservoir, right? Sorry. All right, what am I doing next? All right, we're sewing these two together here. Up to the notch. And up to the notch. I'll go from the notch out so I can see my stitching this time. But not a vacuum, okay. <laughs> this is pretty funny. All right, so now let's sew these two together. Why am I still using red thread, by the way? I need to switch my thread. I'm going to regret this red thread. I really need the cream in here. was about to run out. All right, so let's see. Let's switch my bobbin out and get the other one winding. And then we're, you know, we're guys, we're doing the Cascade um, duffel coat the week after. I'm gonna open that box up today or, or Monday. Look at all my stuff for it. I'm excited about that one. Pizza sauce color, right? Oh, oh yeah, yeah, right, okay. Oh, right, okay, I get that. I get you, Rachel. Yeah, because they're like, oh, I'll be right back and they leave it down. <laughs> I see that. My camera's still so zoomed in. But let me at least cover. Um, I like it when you can at least see right here because I don't sew like mashed up to the table like that. And so I feel bad when I have something in my, in my hands and you don't see it. Okay, so where's the filling? Here's the filling. This is the pizza sauce. <laughs> All right, so remember, this is gonna be a little easier to see than the blueberry. The blueberries is cuter. Okay, so I put the short end towards this end. Let's make sure we clip here. I know, I need to stop using these scissors. I really do, I'm just attached to them. I need to draw on my line here. It's gonna be really hard to see. It'll be easier to see on the pepperoni. I'm gonna go like that so I can kind of see that's where the point is. So I'm gonna go straight across right there. When Louise for the Cascade Duffel, um, not this coming week, because that was supposed to be the sleeve draft, but the week afterward. So the week of the 16th. So on the 18th, 19th, and 21st, I will be making the Cascade Duffel coat. By Greenline Studio, right? It's for a friend. I'm not very familiar with it. 
Next week, if we don't do the sleeve, um, I might just do some relaxing stuff. <laughs> you know? Maybe the gift bags. All right, so this is, you line up the end and see, I put this little long edge, I kind of line it up with that seam allowance under there. But I start my stitching in the seam. Remember, we lift up the edge and move it over here. Get it out of the way. Pivot. This one's literally so much easier to see, I bet. All right, so now I'm getting down to this pivot point. So I put my all there and in the point. Turn, and then I'm gonna clip down to that point. I sometimes go through the fabric. All right, and now I'm going to pivot again. Let's get away from that edge. Pivot again. This one matched up perfectly this time. So remember I go, I'm matching seam line to seam line. So right here is where I'm going to. There's a seam right here on this piece. Now I'm pivoting again. Okay, I'm getting to this point. So I like to Make sure I have it all lined up. Nothing ooches. And we're gonna trim, or I mean clip, ooh, out. Clip down. You know, it's never sewing my finger that happens. It's the presser foot hitting my finger and that hurts far more because it happens more often. <laughs> Ah, nice, Kathleen. I saw someone, um, I think it was Knitted Wit. She's doing some sort of pajama along thing. I was like, oh, that's fun. So when I get to that corner, I actually pull this out of the way like this. Because that's the little point right there. This one didn't stay open, so it's a little bit bulky. Okay, so here we have this funky piece. Let's look at our points there, make sure. We don't need to clip anymore. And now we're gonna put it right side together. I don't really think too hard on this. I think, okay, this is the top triangle. This one's the top triangle. I just put it together and I go. Right sides together. Start anywhere on this one. I just try and start in a nice straight spot, kind of like the like an airplane runway, you know? Get my ruffle out of the way. Pivot. Line up all these corners, or points, really. This is a corner, but that one's a point. This feels a little bit off right now, so I'm kind of making sure it doesn't get off. This is when you can rectify everything, is when you get down to your point right here. I don't have as much trouble figuring out where the pivot point is on this point as I do when I do the filling, you know. So match up this, I sometimes you can kind of look for that little shape, get it together like that. All right, making our way around, almost done. Get my ruffle out of the way, line up my seams. 
feel like every time I do this little back spot today, it's been a little bit of a pain. Maybe my pattern pieces aren't perfect. Like the ones in the pattern. Because I was using those and then I just switched back to my old ones. Because they were traceable. I remember thinking, oh yeah, these are okay. <laughs> they might not have been. All right, I'm going to taper this point just for a bit. Now we're going to turn it right side out. With that uh, interfacing, it does make it a little stiff. So using the stiffener would have been almost impossible. It would have been too much work. You can insert the stiffener though before you um, stuff it if you like. Just make sure you cut the stiffener up to the um, seam line. So what I would do is trim off a quarter of an inch around the perimeter of those pieces. <laughs> oh, there's excellent fly instructions in your pattern. That's awesome. So many people have trouble with, you know, the the, the, instruct, the instructions that come with doing a fly, you know? All right. Put my finger in there and kind of push it all out. I can hear the train and it's the train's so far away from me. It's sound travels so weird. <laughs> Hi Glenn. Oh gosh. I know, right? Um it's funny because I I've, I've gotten the question recently on one of on the, the video I have for putting in the fly. Um it might might have been one of you that said, is this for men or women? And for a second there I was like, I thought they were the same. Oh my gosh, are they different? Oh shoot, maybe I should have done that differently. Maybe I should put one for men and women. Maybe I put the men's up for the women. Oh gosh, you know, anytime I get a comment, I'm always like, yikes. And then I was like, no, 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 no. It's the same. <laughs> it is one of the weird things. Dang it, don't do that. Uh, it is one of the weird things of clothing that they don't have a, a change. You know, like like they do for button plackets, but the only reason that women are different than men is because a long time ago, people used to dress women, and so they put the buttons on the other side to make it easier for that person. Such a weird thing, like, honestly, I've thought that through, and I'm like, really? That doesn't make sense. Because it was a woman dressing a woman. So, you know what? Like when you start thinking about it, it's like, it's not a man dressing a woman. It's a woman dressing a woman. So what does it matter? They could have done whatever they wanted. Yeah, I think you're right, Louise. And um, on my, by my house, there's this, it's kind of hard to explain, but um, it's not very common for cities to have a city park, like a really massive city park, but ours has one. It's pretty special. And the last place I lived had one too. And it, there's only like 30 in the country cities that have these massive city parks. And this one goes like up into the hills where they filmed the original Robin Hood movie, <laughs> black and white. And so this park, it's called um, Bidwell Park. Um, it's huge, but it's a narrow tongue down between our neighborhood and across the park, there's a neighborhood as well. And so that narrow tongue goes straight to downtown. I'm, I'm three miles from downtown. Or, yeah, three miles from downtown. Downtown is very small. <laughs> and I will hear, when, especially when like the students are back, like the college students are back, I can tell on the first few weekends because there's more sirens and stuff like that. Um, and then I can at night hear the train. So I can hear things come, coming, traveling up the park. This thing looks 
pretty weird right now. We're about to make it look cute. But yeah, I think you're right. The rain really presses down all the other ambiance and lets it shine through. All right, so we're gonna stitch this on the, um, I'm just gonna try and push out these seams a little bit, make them nice and easy to deal with. The canvas, you can get a much pointier point and that's what I've been fussing around with, but you can also go awry, right? Like with the wool felt, you're not as worried about it. It's a little softer. It still looks like a point. But for the canvas, you start, keep feeling like you can get more. You can dig more out of there. No one to say stop. <laughs> okay, so here we go. Let's stitch this. So I'm going to fiddle with this edge here. The canvas is so nice and flat, though, and it really makes it crisp. So if any of you make this, I really hope that you'll show me. And you can tag it with SS Cupcake or SS Pie Slice or So So Patterns, and I'll see it. I've had one person do it. I just went too far. You can get so far with the canvas that I was like, wait, that's the ruffle. I just totally went through the ruffle. I've never done that before. Just one stitch. You can get right up to it. The canvas is so much flatter. I've been playing a new game lately and the music's stuck in my head. It's not undispleasing, it's just weird. You know? It's such a weird thing. All right, let's get this edge nice and crisp. That crust, I think I'm gonna go have pizza now. I don't, I like my pizza, like when people see how, how I like my pizza, they're so grossed out because I don't like red sauce. And um, I really love greens, like arugula or kale or, um, so I like a white pizza and I really like greens on top of it. There's one that's been doing this little balsamic drizzle on it. It's really good. Okay, get my ruffle out of the way. Get all my little threads. I didn't quite get in the ditch when I started there. It's pretty obvious. I think I'm gonna stitch this one a little further so it matches the other side. So it's visually balanced. Pizza pie. I, I kind of like the the selection of that fabric actually. It works. Cool. I have so many of these. This is the one I use <laughs> lately. It doesn't have a magnet. I've been moving on to this one. Let's put this little piece of uh, stiffener in this cupcake. Yeah, I know, it looks pretty good, huh? Quirky.
But let's be honest, how much pizza do we actually eat this month of the year because there's not enough time to cook? I can't stop thinking about that apricot pie we had for Thanksgiving. I want to go back to that farm and see if they're still selling them. All right, cool. They need some stuffing, right? I'm going to send my kid to the store and get me more. <laughs> cool, well, you know, let's pull them down. Which one do you guys like best? Not including, not, not that one. <laughs> that one's so funny. I love the colors of this. Like I love the saturation and the crispness. <laughs> Pretty cute. I'll have to stuff those and so um maybe I'll find like a place that's doing a gift basket or something. I just gave one of these away for an auction. The pizza, Louise? That's awesome. I know. It's it's it turned out really good. It looks so real. This is a person who tested their fabric. Cause there's so many designers that don't print their samples onto fabric. And you can tell. This is someone who did. They got it right. They checked the color. They checked the print quality. <laughs> you know? Yeah, I know. They're, they're all so different. I don't know how you could pick either. But they do look really different. This one, this pom-pom's not much bigger than that. You know? All right. Okay, well, um, I'll let you know what we're going to sew on Wednesday. It might be an archer. I've made that with you guys a few times. Um, maybe I'll do some gift bags. Let me think about it. Hopefully no one's not like, I was ready though. And they're not like leaving for a year in January, you know, onto some sewing isolation retreat and they're waiting to have their block with them. <laughs> I can really come up with a story quick, right? Out of paranoia. Well, thanks for coming, you guys. I know it's such a busy time of year. Thanks for sewing with me all week for gifts and everything. Um, thank you so much, too, for all of the Twitch Prime subscriptions you guys have been re-upping and all of the Patreon patronage. Um, you guys really came through. And I know some of you probably did it just to get the free pattern, and I totally understand that. And that's I, 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 it's totally fine. I mean, you know, it, if you're um, okay with the instructions being the video, that works for me. Okay, cool, Louise, thanks. Night, Rachel, sleep well. Um, so I really appreciate all that and um, the donations and the bits, everything. You guys really shined for me this week. Thank you. And I will be here Wednesday cutting something out. I'm not sure quite yet, but I'll announce that on Monday or Tuesday so you'll know. Usually I try and post the schedule ahead of time, but this one will be a little more spontaneous and maybe a little bit lower, lower, uh, work a t-shirt and a skirt I don't know if I well which ones like I have to have everything kind of ready I can't right now fit in shopping for anything and printing it out and getting it here so it'd have to be something kind on my radar I have sewn both t-shirts and skirts not very many skirts so I've only done the the Tanya culottes which turned out amazing by the way I love those things I did not think I was gonna like those um that was a needle shark box, by the way. I'm really missing that box. <laughs> um, and then um, I made the Azara skirt by Deer and Doe Brown Sugar. That is a really cute skirt. Very versatile. And I, I think I added pockets and I lined it. I think that's what I did differently, which was really easy to do. And uh, that pattern actually comes in far more inclusive sizing on their website as a PDF download. The print version isn't... Um, I, I was the top size, <laughs> but it fits me really well. So I did those three things and the t-shirt I drafted myself and did, but I've sewn a bunch. In fact, I, there may even be a video on just sewing a t-shirt. If you're looking for that kind of instruction, I think I do it with and without the cover stitch or with the cover stitch. So, um, if you had something in mind, let me know. I do have some fabrics around. That I would like to sew up, but I also have some gift sewing to do. 
That's what I was thinking, the button-up shirts. Or I do want to make that reversible archer. I'm kind of curious if I can do that. I've been thinking about it, and I think I figured out a way to do the collar. I'm wearing an archer right now. And I was thinking, like, what if I did, like, this fabric, this collar side and this stand are the same fabric and then this one and the under are the same fabric so that when it's you're wearing it it would look like that oh the dahlia cool i've uh sewn that a few times uh, the sleeveless version brown sugar i think i only have one video though i've made that dress probably four times so it's it's on the website you can find the links to it i sewed it this summer though um, a shirt dress. I love shirt dresses. I've made the Rita shirt dress. Do you know that one, Sherry? It's awesome. Great shirt dress. Like I said, I can't really start from scratch today for something next week. It'd have to be something kind of already on my in my sights because um, I don't work tomorrow or Monday. So I'm only here Tuesday. It gives me Tuesday to get patterns in every all the fabric. Yeah, the Rita shirt dress is great. I think it's by, um, is that by Paper Cut, you guys? Paper Cut Patterns? Pretty sure. I love that dress. I, I The only flaw with it, and I didn't even realize it, is it doesn't have pockets. I didn't even notice it. I'm going to add pockets to mine someday. I can't believe I missed that. It is one of those dresses. It's like safari shirt dress. It's like long with big slits up the sides, buttons down. The pockets are cute. It's really cute. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, named. Thank you, Louise. That's it. Yeah, I know. I love uh, shirt dresses. I, I would like to do... You know what I would really like, actually, Sherry? I want a plaid shirt dress. So maybe I would try and figure that out. Because I kind of want a plaid flannel shirt dress. <laughs> Did you see the one Thread Theory Designs posted recently? Um, this gal made her and her husband matching plaid shirts, and she turned hers into a shirt dress. It's actually really cute. I wouldn't use that pattern because it's a men's, but yeah, it's really cute. I know. I love plaid, too. I don't know if I want to go buy more fabric, though. I just bought a bunch of fabric. <laughs> yeah. Plaid shirt dress. Yes. Yeah, well, maybe I'll think about that. Because that's something I actually want now really bad. And I don't think I have. I don't have the right stuff right now. Yeah, I got nothing. I'm usually pretty good about keeping my fabric stash pretty small. So, All right, you guys. Well, um, thank you. Have a great weekend. Eat all the treats and stuff. Yeah, I like the Thread Theory patterns too, Glenn. I've made the Jetland pants and the Fairfield button-up. That's it. Oh, yeah, Sherry, that'll be nice. Yeah, great white and teal plaid. That sounds perfect. Oh, my gosh, that sounds great. Maybe I'll see if Hearts has anything. Maybe I could move the Cascade Duffel ne to next week. Hmm. All right, you guys are giving me some stuff to think about. <laughs> I don't want to add much to my workload, though, you guys. It has to be straightforward. I could do the Rita shirt dress in a plaid. That would totally work and just make it a little shorter so it doesn't look like a plaid nightgown. <laughs> you know? I have gingham, but I don't have plaid. All right. Plaid shirt dress. All right. You guys are tugging on my, my spot, but I really want one of those. Cozy flannel. I kind of want, like, a gathered skirt and just, like, a little, like shirt and it just like sewn into the seam not even open all the way kind of like old school style i don't know all right like i like is the hinterland, hinterland like that wait i can't remember what the hinterland looks like at the top but all right you guys have a great weekend um do all the fun stuff get all your stuff done so you can see me next week and um, i will see you guys later thanks for coming bye wait where's my project thing okay bye